Welcome, denizens of the night, to After Dark. Tonight I present to you a tale, a Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition one-shot, a tale of Zala, of Clan Banu Hakim, an aspiring Alistair, on the hunt for a Red Lister. Please enjoy, and remember... Nothing good ever happens after dark. So we are tonight uh, telling the story of Zala, who is an aspiring Alistair. Did yeah. you did you have a specific uh, uh, Justicar you wanted to work under, or were you trying to work under the Red Alistair herself, Lady Lucinda? Uh, uh, Lady Lucinda would actually be really dope to... Uh... To work under i was kind of leaving that up to you okay um, but uh, whatever is the most interesting i say well lucind with everything that's been happening in this section of the united states she's uh she's become more and more agitated when it comes to the way that the kindred do business over here she's particularly not happy with the current prince of portland oregon due to the fact that uh, he has kind of turned against his his personal oaths. Uh, this man was, in fact, a... Um, he was an Archon himself. Uh -huh. and, uh, and he quit because he wanted the city. I see. So he took a step down. He took did. He did. Well, he does not see it as that way, but yes, everybody else looks at him as, as like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, general general social norm for what it is to be an Archon versus a Prince, yeah. Um, it's rumored in the halls of the Archons uh, that the Justicar Juliet Parr might have something to do with this. Oh, Miss Parr. So there's a little bit of, um, in not infighting, but definitely mistrust happening between the Justicars. Well, that's not good at all. Yeah. But so, also... so you're going to be called in specifically by Lucind to meet right. her. Let's just say a few nights ago, um, she had you meet in Texas. It'll take us. So there's going to be a little bit of country hopping when it comes into this with this story, just just to get the background going. No problem. I'm all about country hopping. Well, Lucind is currently working on creating li a little bit more stability in um, in the kindred population, uh, specifically in San Antonio, Texas. There have not been many, I guess, kindred functions as of late. Not major ones, no. anyway. No Elysiums or anything like that really happening? Not that big. Um, actually, uh, in, in, this, in this world that we're touching base on, there haven't been many major Elysiums in the past six years or so. Oh, wow. Um, okay. The Second Inquisition is getting incredibly uh, active. And every time a large Elysium gathering is planned, what they end up doing is slaughtering the elders who attend. Oh. Yeah, it's almost like they have an exact beat on when these... It's almost like they know that these Elysiums are happening and they're using them to suss us out it's starting like to wait yes it's, it's starting to seem like that the the last elysium major elysium that was held in the united states was in tampa florida about six years ago when the prince just decided that they were just going to say damn caution and they were going to continue doing what they like to do which was to throw their lavish parties in gallus uh -oh. and the not the uh the uh afternoon before the elysium uh most of the elders were dragged out into the sun Oh my! So the masquerade is is pow is paramount right now. Yeah, I'm assuming that they're really hunkering down on that. Now, aside from There's... the fact that there was um, confirmed hunter activity in San Antonio, Texas, the prince, the Nosferatu prince of San Antonio, Texas, did in fact put off a a successfully Elysium with uh, with next to no issues. Okay. And that might very well be because Lucind and a garrison of Archons were there to protect. 
Mm. Makes sense. That makes sense. So, the first thing that's going to happen tonight concerning Zala is an invitation to a very high class hotel in San Antonio, Texas. The invitation being from Lucind herself. All right. Excellent. I shall make my way there post haste. <laughs> now, have you ever been there yourself, the city? I've never been to the city, no. Okay. Unfortunately. It's a very strange mix of old and new. The Alamo itself is sitting right in the center of downtown. There, oh, wow. There's an archaeological dig happening constantly at that location where there's tourists flooding in and out. There's a Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum directly across the street. On the other side is a massive four-story mall. There's a river that cuts through circular the entire downtown area where there's gondolas that uh, travel uh, through the river with amazing neon lights all over the place. It's a, it's a very strange city, but it's beautiful. The, yeah, uh, kind of like things superimposed on each other almost yeah when i when i say old and new also it does look like there's new buildings literally growing out of the old ones wow it's a very interesting place it sounds like it now specifically you just recently went there right i did which is what's in that which is what's inspiring a lot of this description right now <laughs> absolutely hey man real world experience sells it now, you're actually being invited to the Majestic, which there is a hotel portion and a theater portion of this uh, of this very large building. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay. You are given instructions to go into the hotel lobby and inform the man who's guarding the elevator that you are to go to the second floor and that you will be that you're expected. So are, th right. are there any uh, preparations you would like to do ahead of time? Um, short of making sure that I am in the most presentable way I could be. Normally, Zala would not uh, worry too much about his attire uh, since he dresses very practically um, for the job and tasks that he has at hand. But in this case, he will actually make an attempt to look a lot more presentable than he usually does simply because of who he is meeting and the purpose of the meeting itself. But he will still have at hand all of his normal accoutrement okay. of things that he uses. <clears throat> so as you're entering the Majestic, uh, the entrance to the hotel portion is just to the left of the theater. And there is... There's just so many people that are trying to get into the theater. There's some massive band playing at this... Uh, playing tonight. Uh... Let's see. We can actually probably check to see who's playing. Who's playing currently? Right on. Okay. I'm actually getting my discipline cards handy. Oh, those are those are nice. Oh yeah. Just Let's see. Ah, there we go. Okay. Well, getting getting into the season. Getting into the holiday season, Mannheim Steamroller is playing. Okay. Never heard of them, but all right. <laughs> they, uh, they're they a uh, band that primarily does Christmas music. Okay, cool. But they're, they're, uh, it's a hell of a show. Um, but as you, uh, as you walk past all of these people and into the lobby of the hotel portion of the Majestic, you're going to notice that the, the lobby is almost painfully too small. And they don't try to, I guess, uh, they don't try to fit what should be in here, in here. There are four sets of elevator doors that are highly polished stainless steel. The, uh, the old tiling on the floors are in impeccably, uh, regal, and the walls are just an off white eggshell color, uh, that it just screams elegance, but it's so condensed and so small. And the thing that makes it the worst is that there's this massive table with a plant fixture uh, in the center of it with a massive chandelier hanging down. Ooh. There's also one gentleman who 
is a wall of a human being. Um, he's he he just goes into making this place seem more small than it actually even is. But he he seems to be almost as wide as he is tall, just all shoulders. He's wearing a uh, a black uh, a black blazer, blue jeans, and you can you can just make out the word security under it under his jacket on the t-shirt that he's wearing. Dang. If his shoulders were any more broad, they wouldn't need any doors. Yeah, no, he looks like he would have to turn sideways to get into the elevator. <laughs> that seems inconvenient. <laughs> All right. So I guess I just make my way through? Uh, yeah, you were just told to let the gentleman know that you need to get to the second floor. All right, so I'll walk up. Uh, very uh, casually and uh, I'll say uh, excuse me sir he'll just look down at you he seems annoyed by your very presence I apologize if I'm interrupting your very serious business but I need to make my way to the second floor are you able to assist in this matter he just turns around and pushes the button it's something that you easily could have done yourself um, when the door is open um, he just gestures for you to go inside. All right, I give him a slight nod, make my way through and, uh, into the elevator. And he pushes the button for you. Um, the doors are going to shut, and the elevator itself is... It's, it's a good size. The, the elevator itself is a good size. The tile work seems to follow itself from the lobby into the elevator. And the walls on the inside are almost like a marbled green color. Uh, the best way that I can describe it is, have you ever seen, it's the same the same color and texture as the old Vampire the Masquerade books. Okay, yeah, the nice green and black and... Uh, yeah, almost kind of almost up. like a swirled marble. Yep, yep. Yeah, I was, I was taken aback when I walked into these things and I was like, this is the perfect setting. <laughs> <laughs> almost like problems. I'm like, wow, you couldn't have screamed any more Vampire the Masquerade <laughs> When the door is open, which happens fairly quick because you're only going to the second floor, right? the tile again follows into this area, into this small little lobby where you can look over to your left and you see the four elevator doors. But you look across from you and again, there's two elevator doors there as well. Those don't go all the way down to the lobby. And there's a large reliefs on the wall that just are a very stylized sharp V in marble on the walls with the green also continuing on the inside of this room. There is a door that is open to your uh, right as soon as you get off the elevator. All right. I will... They didn't tell me exactly on the second floor where to where to go, right? They told you nothing. <laughs> this is this well, is not this is not uncommon when you're working with the Justicars. It, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, they, I will. They do tend. Sure they do tend to expect. That? I just just saying they they do expect you to understand and know things that you have no reason to know. Ah, uh, gotcha. Well, that makes sense. They're always always testing to make sure that my my skills are sharp and my awareness is sharp. So. Uh, I'm going to assume the simplest answer is, hey, there's an open door to my right. I'm just going to go peek in there and see if that's where I need to be. Okay. To start. The hallway that you enter is incredibly thin. Uh, you don't have to, but there's an urge to turn sideways while you're walking down this. And um, I guess to, to show the look of it, everything is this... Everything is this beautiful, dark hardwood. Hmm. And the carpet is now that brilliant green color. Uh, it, and the, the hallway that you're going only leads to one area. It leads to a small bar that's, that's back here. There's a few uh, seats. There's only, there's only room for about six or seven tables in this bar. A few, uh, a few bar stools at the bar itself. Um, and sitting at one of the tables is Lucinde. Well, simple enough. I will make my way over to Lucin, and I will gracefully await for her uh, acknowledgement before I take a seat across from her. <clears throat> She's sitting at the table with a uh, a wine glass of Vitae in front of her, and she just nods to you 
and and gestures toward the, towards the chair. All right. I will nod back, and I will take my seat. And wait for her to initiate the conversation. But I will be staring at her with my eyes unblinking, focused directly into her gaze. Her hair... Her hair just cascades down her shoulders. Her blue her uh, her blue power suit that she's wearing is it, it it doesn't fit the location mm. there's just something quite off about it the the color isn't quite right for the room the lighting then there's the fact that her skin just constantly has a look of of chiseled marble whenever you see her oh. she's just she's just a hardened elder yeah no nope, that makes sense the color probably clashes really hard with this this kind of a environment it, it very much does and she doesn't tr- She's not trying to appear human either. Right, she's just herself. Which I can appreciate. Hmm. There's no need to there's no need for a facade here. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining me, Zala. Problem. Whenever you need me, I will come. I hope you it exactly go ahead oh sorry we had some crossover i said uh what is it exactly you wish to speak about are you familiar with the events that occurred in prague recently uh i'm assuming i would be at least somewhat familiar there has been so much happening in prague lately um there there (laughs) there have been it's there have been an attempted two different conventions back to back in prague um, oh, the first one happened um, quite quite a while back ago. And when she says recently, she could be very well talking decades. Yeah. But uh, g- given her time span of her life. But um, the things that are happening in Prague as of late are the fact that there was, the f- there was a convention in Prague where the Anarchs and the Camarilla had gotten together and one of your colleagues, Theo Bell, murdered Hardestat. Mm, yep. As well okay. as well as his child, Peterson. And uh, uh, that is the one. That's the one that I would be most familiar with. Well, there's that, and then there's the fact that um, a little while later, the Prince of Prague, Marcus, decided that he was going to attempt to hold another convention in attempts to uh, stop the fighting between the Anarchs and the Camarilla. Um, uh, that erupted in a massive attack from the Second Inquisition, a whole bunch of deaths, and a massive blood hunt against the Anarchs in the city. And that's where uh, that Battle Royale game takes place. That is, in me. fact, that is, in fact, where that comes into play as well, yes. See, see, I was wondering that because I was like, I don't remember their huge-ass fight breaking out when the original convention of Prague happened, so that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, no, that it's that was the, the next, the, another convention in Prague happened right after that, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so I would would I reasonably know um, at least the broader details of what happened in both of these conventions? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, so, the Anarchs suck. That's that's pretty much what you can take out of all of it. <laughs> um, so she asked me that, and I I, uh, I look off to the side and kind of lean in in contemplation, clasping both of my hands, resting my chin on them, and I say, "Are you referring to the absolute shit show that the Anarchs?" are constantly perpetuating in that place? She, or are uh, you speaking of more uh, specific things? <laughs> she actually smirks a little bit when you say that. Um, I am referring to that. Uh, specifically what happened with my... Uh, well, the one I replaced. Uh, yes, your predecessor. I've pulled out my support of many of the Camarilla cities within the United States. Are you aware of this? Uh, am I aware of that? You, she, she's very vocal about the things that she does that surprise others. Okay. So there's a good. Um, there's most likely you've heard of it. Okay. Um, I have been aware of your uh, decreased activity within the United States. Yes. There are others, however, who have taken up the mantle in certain cities. 
There is un he there is unrest happening in Seattle at the moment. Does not surprise me in the like slightest. Well Peter Zoon. He uh he had a friend in Seattle by the name of Tacoma Sonata. They were the Malkavian primogen of Seattle. I see. So he not, is the top topic of our discussion. He is, in fact. Peter's, uh, Peter Zoon's Peter Zoon's friendliness extended quite some ways, and um, there were specific uh, dealings that Sonata was involved in that no longer can be protected from Peter Zoon any longer. Sonata is suspected of being a serial diablerist. Oh my. Well, uh, those are some very hefty allegations levied against him. Well, the I... proof that Sonata has uh, decided to take that path in his own life um, is coming from a very interesting source, and I would like you to meet with that source and get more information. Absolutely. Who is this source and where will we meet? What time? And should I be prepared? Should you be prepared? You should always for be prepared. For specific things. Yeah, that is very true. There's a hotel in Seattle called the Atrium. And I want you to go there and meet with the kindred who operates it. Her name is Elena Zantosa. Very well. I uh, shall meet with this. Are you familiar with the name Zantosa at all? Uh, out of game? I am not. Out of game, you are not? Out of game, I am not. In game, would I be? Uh, why don't you go ahead? Uh, please do not forget your hunger die. Uh, but please give me a... Uh, give me an intelligence plus insight roll. Intelligence plus insight. That will be... Let's see if you've heard this at all. A whopping... Two dice. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. Alright, just your intelligence then. I suppose so. I didn't put any in insight? Wow. That's a dumb, dumb move. Insight's, um, insight is memory. Yeah. Yep. It's also reading. Oh, people. well. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well. Live with the choices, I suppose. That is a, a whopping two dice, one of which is hunger. <laughs> that is fine. As, All long, right. as long as you don't frenzy on the Jester car, you're good. Right. The game will end very quickly there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, so I ran a single session the other day, and it stopped after about an hour. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I did get one success on my hunger dice. Specifically. One success. Um, I will say that you have heard the name, but you can't pl quite place where. All right. I've heard the name of, of uh, San, was it Zantosa? Zantosa. I've heard the name of Zantosa, but uh, the details escape me. All I can suggest in her presence is to be polite, understand whose domain that you are in, and uh, do, not be a f do not be shocked by anything you might learn while you're there. Of course. I try to maintain as amicable as a demeanor as I can. Then I shall make my way to this atrium. Is there uh, anything else you wish to discuss with me while we are here? Just that for now. All right. Sounds good. As you uh, get up and turn to leave the area, you realize that although you thought you were alone in this place, you are not. There are several other kindred sitting here. And the reason that you know they're all kindred is because every one of them is Nosferatu. Oh, I have unseen... Since the unseen. Oh, do you? Um, I do. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, tell you what. Why don't you go ahead uh, before you get up and do a wits and awareness roll, and see if you're able to catch catch them on there. If you want, you can go ahead and add your aspects as well. All right, wits and awareness. That is a good five dice plus one aspects, which is six dice. Excellent. 
making this. And what's the difficulty I'm looking for? Ouch. One success? No, two successes, my bad. Um, you got three successes. Your hunger dice was three? also a three. Or your your hunger dice was also an eight. So you got... Um... You only got two. Oh, yeah. No, you got two successes. No, you would not have noticed them. Okay. You would not have noticed them. When you turn around, there is... A good number of Nosferatu sitting around, of, uh, sitting around at the other tables. One of which is a woman who is wearing a very beautiful dr dress. She's a, f she is a uh, very slight thing, and her Nosferatu deformities actually have her uh, face uh, in the form of a sugar skull. But it doesn't look like any sugar. type of it doesn't look like any kind of makeup. It's actually just her face. I see, and she that one catches my eye for. Whichever reason. Well, it's it's she's a very it's a very odd Nosferatu look. We can put it that way. Uh, how many Nosferatu do I see? Um, I'd probably say there's about five or six of them in there. Okay, I uh, I acknowledge each of the ones that I notice. Make eye contact and give them a slight nod. And uh, the the uh, the most odd looking one, the lady, uh, I will give a slight bow to. And I will continue making my way. You give your slight bow and you walk away and you notice that um, one of them, uh, male as far as you can tell, whose face looks like... It, it looks like, like... It looks like collected black candle wax, if anything. Oh, okay, so he's... So he's got, like, waxy, droopy skin. He's got waxy, droopy skin. His hair is incredibly oily. But again, he's very well-dressed. Um, you'll notice he bent down to listen to something that uh, the sugar scald Nosferatu was uh, whispering to him. And as you're on your way out, um, he will catch up to you as you're walking down the hallway and say, due to your manners, our prince says that you are acknowledged in San Antonio. I nod my head and I say, thank you very much for the acknowledgement. I will make sure that I make my business as swift as I can to not cause undue trouble to you and your kind here. Thank you. You're most welcome. And uh, may I have your name? Cheshire. Cheshire. And he just gives you a very large, toothy grin. I see. Very appropriate. I like it. All right. So... You have your mission, as far as you know what it is as of now. And All right. so you need to head to Seattle. Yes. Now, Seattle. working as an Archon under Lucind, you would know that if she sends you to a place, she typically has an airline ticket or a way of travel handled for you. You're not, me you're not expected to handle that yourself. Okay. I would assume that... Uh... She would have left whatever contacts necessary to get there. Um, given the way that she typically works, and I would love to say that she just gives you all of this information, but she does not. Um, mm. The way the way that Lucin typically works is is if you specifically flew out to see her and you took one airline, you're most likely taking the same airline. Right. Which I believe is San Antonio International, which is about. 15 minutes outside of downtown. Excellent. I will uh, I will call an Uber. <laughs> call an Uber. I will call an Uber <laughs> and have them take me to this place. Okay. This airport, the airport, and um, I will assume that uh, the tickets and the situation for it will be under whatever pseudonym or any, or, you know, <clears throat> identity I use. Yes, yes. I, I saw that you have mask. Hmm. Do you have a... Dis I believe you did. Did you not? No, you do not. Yes, you do. Mask. Oh, no, you have the mask flaw for known blank body. That's right. Yeah, yeah, ma yeah mask flaw, known blank body. So I would, uh... Yeah. Okay. All right. Hmm. 
Let's see. I will. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and say that you would have had to have landed in San Antonio yesterday, and you are seeing the prince early in the evening tonight. Yeah. So what we will say is, let's see, let's go ahead and say that you met with Lucinde. Uh, given the fact that it's it's winter, it gets darker earlier. Uh, we'll go ahead and say that you you met with her at like seven p.m. Uh, yeah. With travel, uh, you will be arriving in Seattle at eleven thirty tonight. All right. It is. Uh, I'm con I'm considering travel and everything. It is a four and a half hour flight nonstop. Four and a half hour domestic flight sounds about right across the country almost for the yep. most part. All right. I will uh, make my way there via Uber, and then I will <laughs> uh, take my flight, uh, decline the peanuts. Actually, no, I won't. I'll take the peanuts. You'll take the peanuts. Okay. I'll take the peanuts. You know, I got to keep up appearances. You know That's I mean? true. That's true. Um, uh, while you are going through customs in um, San Antonio, would you please roll me a, let's see. We will go ahead and do a wits plus stealth roll. To wits, tar plus, yeah. Will wits plus that stealth. Is. All right. That is a, another five die pool. We need to make sure that you can get through the TSA being a known blank body. Absolutely. Good old TSA, man. I'm telling you. Four regular and one hunter. That is a whopping four successes. Four successes. Okay, you're going to be able to get through without that much of a problem. All right. I make my way through the check in, the TSA checks. I keep myself covered, probably sporting some sort of a uh, you know hoodie or something like that to uh, help trying to keep myself, you know inconspicuous but not suspicious you know because someone walking around with like a full face mask in the <laughs> airport is not a good not a good thing well i mean you can get away with that nowadays kind of uh <laughs> oh, that, that is fair that is fair so i will actually don a face mask uh yeah you, you know, can utilize uh, those uh typical cough face mask and uh surgical you know mask and uh i will put on a hat you know that yes. kind of covers my face a beanie i guess you could say and uh, make my way through now how do you travel with those weapons that you have? Um, let's see. You can't. You can't carry firearms into. Like, can't have it on you. But I think you can have it transported. Could you not? I don't see why not. If you if you have them under. Yeah, uh, like I, it would be it would be checked in as like luggage, not necessarily something that I carry on person because I know they wouldn't allow that. Yeah. Um, but it, they would be disassembled. In a suitcase, um, the steak itself, I guess, probably wouldn't wouldn't be too. I mean, someone might bat an eye at like, what the hell is this? But I don't think it'd be too crazy. Um, but I, I put it all in the, under the same luggage. I don't have any of it on me. Everything's as disassembled as it can be, um, and it's something that I would have to travel separately with, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, so you're allowing them to travel separately. Um, given yeah. given the fact that Lucindy is sending you from place to place, there are going to be Kindred, if not if not kindred, there will be ghouls working uh, working the airports, uh, and they will be able to make sure that your uh, your luggage does not go through like X ray scans and things like that. Oh, that's yeah, that is fair. That is fair. Well, if I if I have knowledge of that, um, I would definitely do what I needed to do to try to keep things on me um, as much as I can. So if yeah. there's ghouls that I can make contact with and be like, hey, slide the suitcase over here. Don't check it. Just you know, hand it back to me on the other side. Yada, yada, yada. Carry on luggage, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, the way that it typically works is you'd stand in TSA and um, as you're going through the lines, um, you would be called over. Um, 
Now, I uh, do you do you have a last name or is it just Zala? Is it? Um, I mean, I suppose for the sake of uh, keeping up, you know, the the side of being a regular person, it would I would have to have a last name. So uh, it would probably be something extremely innocuous, um, probably something that kind of resembles a uh, uh, an American, like a Middle Eastern American. So probably like something like Zala Anderson or something like that. <laughs> You, uh, as you're walking up, they say, uh, they, they basically just call you out. They're just like, Mr. Smith, if you could come over here. And, uh, they, um, they, they basically do like a, uh, a random, uh, a random passenger check on you. Um, oh yeah, random, huh? Random. <laughs> <laughs> they do a random passenger check on you with a, um, with a, with a metal detecting wand that has not been turned on. And they just push you along through and let you hop on your flight. I nod and uh, move on along my way. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and say that you've landed safely and gotten out of the airport uh, in Seattle. Mm. And I am here. And I will once again hail in Uber <laughs> to take me to this atri atrium. Okay, so you're just going to go straight to the atrium? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I will. I, I waste no time in in getting myself to where I need to go. I've used up a lot of time traveling over here, so I have about maybe ha I have half the night left. So. Okay, like I said, it is pushing uh, midnight as you uh, as you get where you're going. Um, Atrium looks like at one time that it was a a very fine like respectable establishment. Uh, but now you can see the large neon sign that says atrium towards the, towards the roof. You can hear the pounding club music coming from the roof, the flashing lights. There is obviously a bar on the roof of this place. Mm. Roof bars. There is in fact a roof bar. Yes. I have been to one of those in Nashville. <laughs> All right. Um, I do not know uh, what this Elena looks like, correct? Uh, you are not given a description, no. All right, well, I will walk into this place cautiously. Um, I will, uh, I know Unseen, since the Unseen's pretty passive, so, but I will make a conscious effort to keep an eye out uh, for anything that might be standoutish for someone like me. Okay. Um, can I please get a uh, a wits and awareness as you're walking through the hotel wits and awareness absolutely um two successes two successes um probably not enough to catch up on this but uh as you're as you're wandering through the hotel um after uh, after a couple of minutes, what where uh, what type of uh, pl if I could find words, uh, where about in the hotel do you think you would be looking for this person? Um, I would probably try to scout around the VIP areas. I would uh, I would enter the I would enter the hotel because he said it's a hotel slash club, right? Yes. So I would probably enter the hotel, um, and uh, I would obviously book a room. Okay. Unless it's already been taken care of. Uh, if not, then I'll just book a room, and I would ask for. I would probably ask for like a, a one of the higher end rooms. One of the higher end, end rooms. Yeah. And then, um, if I get that, if that's available, then I would just make my way around and try to uh, go to any of the VIP areas and see VIP lounges, things like that. Okay. See. So um, I, I would add, I could also add. You said she, she said she was the owner, right? Uh, yeah, she did say she was the one who ran it. Okay. Um, I would. The most simplest thing to do, honestly, would be to uh, I would ask the front desk if a Miss Elena was available, um, and that uh, a very important guest would want to speak with her. The uh, the person at the desk is a a very well dressed man. Um, who's maybe in his like mid to late twenties. Um, he is uh, 
wearing a very nice suit, except he doesn't have a he doesn't have a tie on, and the top few buttons are are undone. His hair is uh, disheveled, but it's that I meant to do this disheveled. Uh, uh, the model, the, the messy model hairdo. Yeah, the, I just woke up and I can't help but look this good. I actually spent three hours making myself look like this, kind of <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, he's got um, he's got uh, several piercings. Um, and uh, he's got a uh, a name tag that just it's it's on slightly crooked and it just says Johnny. Um, so you're looking for uh, Ms. Zantosa, are you? Yes, uh, I am here to speak with a Miss Elena Zantosa. <sighs> Is she expecting you? She should be. Yes. Give me a second. And he uh, gets on the staff phone uh, behind the counter. And as as he's talking, you don't have heightened senses. You just have... Yeah, I just have unseen pass. You just have uh, un uh, sense the sure, unseen. Sense, sense, sense. I do have unseen pass, but sense the unseen. <laughs> uh, he is... He's looking you up and down. Like, there's part of you that kind of feels like a piece of meat. As he... Oh, <laughs> there's part of you that... Uh, <laughs> I acknowledge it. I look him straight in the eyes and I don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem to care. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he, uh, he looks you up and down and says, all right, well, she doesn't say, she said she's not expecting anybody, but she's happy to meet with you. She's upstairs at the bar. Excellent. Thank you for your work. She'll be in a personal booth. Sounds good. Uh, what, uh, what is his name tag taken? Johnny. Johnny, I say uh, I appreciate your help, Mister Johnny, and I straighten his name tag, and then I uh, turn and head upstairs to the to the area. <laughs> he allows you to do it, and uh, kind of just smirks while you're doing it. And uh, when you get upstairs, uh, it it's it's very strange. It's you get upstairs, and it's just a sea of the night sky. The the overcast of clouds are being lit up by the amount of bright lights that are just all over the place in here. Um, just, it's it's flashing. It's an epileptic nightmare uh, with the the fact that the, the music is so loud that you can almost reminisce what it felt like to have a heartbeat again. Mm. In times like these, I'm thankful I don't have heightened senses up. Oh, yes. No, yep. this is definitely a nightmare for heightened senses. No, it does make the sky look nice. <laughs> If, All right, I, uh, I make my way through this uh, rambunctious tomfoolery that is nightclub activity, and uh, meet with Miss Santosa in the designated spot. I have. Uh, I need you to roll a composure plus awareness to find her. Absolutely. It's very difficult to find this place because the smell in this place the bright the bright lights, the pounding music, the smell of the sanguine resonance that's just pulsating through oh, this yeah. place. I'm lucky I'm not super hungry. Oof. Even even not being super hungry, that's why I'm saying composure. Composure and awareness, you said? Yeah, yes. That's six, that's, uh, six guys. I'm trying to lean to your, towards your strengths. Oh, no, you're good. You are good. Let's see. That is one, two, three. Oh, my goodness. I messed that up. <laughs> my bad. Uh, I mean, wow. <laughs> I, 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 That's I 12 dice. <laughs> yeah, I, I accidentally put 6 and 6. What I meant to do is 5 and 1. I don't know my brain that. Okay, there we go. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven, six. Nice. Okay, with 5 successes, it's not hard to find a woman who is sitting alone at a booth. Um, the reason it's not hard to find her, you probably would not have noticed her right away with the sensory overload that you're experience, uh, experiencing. If it wasn't for the fact that a uh, bouncer is taking uh, a couple of people away from her um, and kind of oh. drawing a little bit of attention. Um, I see. Yeah. She got them bodyguards. Oh yeah, yeah. No, she's got some, she's got some good bouncers on her. Uh, the bouncer that you notice is a small... Uh, a small woman, probably in her um, lower to mid-twenties, 
who's wearing leather pants, uh, very sharp high heels, um, a lingerie shirt, uh, and her hair's up in a ponytail, and she is wearing a devastating amount of makeup. Um, and she just grabs this guy who's twice her size by the wrist, twists it around at his back, and walks him away as if he was nothing. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I'm walking up and I see this and then the first the first thoughts I have are how could she possibly be an effective bodyguard wearing pants so tight she could probably barely move in them along with unbalanced shoes and then I <laughs> see her perform I see her perform this and I nod and think to myself oh well all right then um, <laughs> and uh, I make my way to Miss Santosa and uh, I do not step past the bodyguards um, I wait for them to acknowledge me when you walk up she um she looks towards her guards who again are are just small girls like comparatively um she herself um she has very dark hair but you can see red kind of shining through Ooh, um she looks like she is most likely in her mid to late 30s but she wears it very well uh, and she'll stand to greet you. And how how tall do you think Zala is? Zala is six foot one. Zala is six foot one. Okay, she towers over you at six foot four. All right. I slightly look up at her. And she yeah. is wearing the most beautifully inappropriate evening gown. Ooh. I like me a muscle mommy. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, she's not even wearing heels. She's just that tall. <laughs> Nice. Hey, man. I don't mind a tall girl at all. Now, uh, um, the avatar that I choose for her is uh, Laura Preppen from that 70s show. Laura Preppen. Yeah, she, she played Donna. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But uh, oh, yeah. as, as she is now, not as she was then. <laughs> right on. Hey, that's I'm good with that. That actress is awesome. Um, <laughs> Orange is the New Black is where I know her from. Oh, yes, yes. Um, she, uh, she, uh, she, as I said, stands up, uh, puts her hand out in greeting. I grab her hand. Um, does she put her hand out in a, uh, straightforward handshake, uh, gesture or a, I am allowing you to grab my hand and give me a proper princess greeting uh, um, gesture. She puts her hand out, um, wrist up. Wrist up. Or I said that wrong. Sorry. The back of her hand up. Okay. That, that, that's so prop, favorite, proper sorry. proper princess greeting, I'll put it that way. All right. I will grab her hand gently and uh, bow my head, and I will uh, give her a peck on the back of her hand. Okay. As you're doing that, can I please get a composure and resolve from you? Absolutely. Composure and resolve. That is uh, also six days. It's deep deck. Nice. That is one, two, three, four, five successes. Five successes. Okay, you are going to be absolutely fine. However, the scent on this woman is intoxicating. She is most definitely kindred, but where most kindred don't really put off that much of a scent as far as resonance goes, she seems to be the source of the scent of Sanguine in this place. I can sense that... Uh... She's the, the, the reason why the, the party vibe is so strong here. Mm. She, she does seem to be, and she... She also smells incredibly potent to you. I see. Strength and age, like a fine wine. I, uh... As I, as I sense this, I... I probably let out like an involuntary gulp in my own reaction to control myself <laughs> um and uh i will like i said i'll give her the peck on the hand and then i will raise myself up um you'll see she's smiling down at you when you do and i will give her a smile in return and i say uh mrs antosa i presume 
Is this a private matter? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Follow me. And she is going to walk towards uh, an area that looks like it's mostly made out of lattice and vines. There's, uh, there's actually a lot of trees up, up here on the roof. Hmm. I like that. I have to mix in nature with the urban. But uh, she will lead you into a um, like a private room. This doesn't seem to be an office of any kind, but it just seems to be um, almost like if somebody wanted to rent out this area. Um, that okay. that's most likely possible. Uh, but it actually it's 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 fairly uh, it's not completely soundproof. You can definitely still hear the the beat from outside, but it's not to the point where you need to yell over everybody. Okay. Sounds, sounds delicious. <laughs> um, does she look like... It doesn't seem like she's about to sit somewhere. There are uh, assorted... I would say couches, but the uh, the lower cushions of them are extended quite a bit. These are more like day beds. Oh, okay. And nice. she, she will uh, sit down on one of them, yes. Okay, cool. I don't know if we're like sitting at a table. Otherwise, I would uh, make a point to pull out a chair for her. But if they're if it's just like lounging couches, then I will just uh, take a seat across. Her. <clears throat> so you know my name. Who are you? I am known as Zala. I don't know if you've heard that name at all before, but uh, I work for Miss Lucille in matters regarding. <laughs> While you are explaining that, the moment that you say that you work for Lucind, as you're in the middle of the rest of the uh, rest of the explanation, she just starts laughing. I apologize. <laughs> I did not mean to cause any humorous reactions. <laughs> I'm just surprised that uh, someone as prestigious within the tower would come and see me. Is it all that surprising? Anybody who has information on anything that we may make use of can become a potential person of interest to one such as ourselves. She hasn't told you who I am, has she? She has not, no. <laughs> I find myself constantly trying to piece together pieces of information from her, which is why I always try to maintain myself in as most amicable way as possible. Hmm. So, uh, would you regale me with who you actually are? <laughs> uh, you are sitting in the presence of the Seraphim of the Sabbat of Seattle. Oh, wow. Seraphim are the closest thing that is in existence to Regents right now. Okay. Uh, Zala's eyes widen when he hears this, and he lets out a uh, a sort of nervous chuckle. And he says, uh, hmm. that is, uh, what did they say? Uh, quite a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> I was not aware I would be meeting with someone such as yourself. <sighs> She's just grinning from ear to ear with all of this. This is ironic. Is it now? Quite there. Uh, absolutely. Uh, my business here has nothing to do with you, <laughs> other than speaking with you. So what are we speaking about? Have you heard the name... Well, well I'm sorry, what was it? Uh, Sonata? Uh, Sonata. It's, uh, it's Takuma Sonata. Takuma. Have you heard the name Takuma Sonata? Oh, yes. I am here to speak with you regarding information uh, in regards to him specifically. <laughs> I need to find him. You were sent to Seattle to talk to Seraphim of the Sabbat mm -hmm. about a primogen of the Camarilla. Indeed. The plot thickens. <laughs> well, um... From what I understand, the Camarilla is a little unstable in Sabat nowadays. 
and you're looking for Sonata. Yes. Will you be able to assist in this? I'm sure I can. I assume that uh, his dirty secret has gotten out then. Oh, yes. Most unpleasant business. <laughs> Well, what can I say? Um, what exactly is what exactly is in it for me? If I tell you anything. Hmm. Well, Lucinde is the one who recommended you for this piece of information. I suppose. This could lead to something of a boon, favor, something of so, some sort for you in regards to her or myself, if that is what you wish. As I stated, I am not here to deal with any of your Sabbat affairs. So if you were to garner me this piece of information, I would be able to assist you in some, I suppose. Hmm. Connections are to be had. The Camarilla traffics in boons quite often. I'm not sure if uh, the Sabbat really cares too much about such things. <laughs> I myself am quite the uh, man of my word, as much as I can be. Would it be rude of me to inquire upon what clan you are? Would it be rude of me to ask you to guess? <laughs> ask me to guess. Hmm. Let me see. I'm going to go ahead and make a roll. Right on. Let's see. Hmm, four successes. Just just to let you know, that was not four hunger that I rolled for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was about to say I, I rolled her I rolled her attribute and her skill separately. That's what I was no, rolling. That's, that's fine. That's why I was wondering, like, oh man, oh. she hungry. Oh no, that's five successes. Three. Yep, it sure she, is. She uh she looks you up and down. And she kind of leans in and, like, sniffs you and says, I'm going to have to say Banu Hakim. And I would have to congratulate you on a perfect guess. <laughs> well, in that case, let me see. Uh, young Banu Hakim sent to the city looking for <sighs> do you have any idea what kind of uh, trouble you're getting into looking for this man? Mm, I can only guess but the kind of trouble I'm going to get into is irrelevant this is my job <laughs> and that's such a pursuit. Though I wish to be as prepared as possible. Which is why I'm hoping you would be able to accommodate with as much information as you're able. I'm going to help you, and I'm going to give you something. She uh, stands up and goes over to a small cabinet. It's a it's basically like a, a a liquor bar that's in the corner, and mm. she opens up a um, 
she opens up uh, she opens up the uh, the cabinet that has all the wine bottles in it. I have something that could be very useful to you, especially when dealing with uh, Sonata. And she's going to hand you an empty bottle. Hmm. Do what you know what kind of bottle is it? It's, it's a regular wine bottle. It's an empty bottle that has been highly decorated. Like there's lots of there's lots of gold uh, filigree stuff. Gold. <laughs> it's got lots of gold filigree, but it's got lots of like what look like glass beads. Like I don't want to say glued to it, but attached to it. Okay. And maybe, maybe like glass beads that were like blown in with the bottle when it was made. Yes. Yes. They're actually like embedded into the glass itself. And okay. Cool. Uh, and along with that, she gives a little, uh, she, uh, she has a little, uh, little satchel of, uh, fabric, uh, and she'll open that out up onto the counter and it's got a, uh, what looks like a, a thick, um, four-sided wax stick, uh, which highly gives off the scent of blood. A thick four-sided wax what? Stick. Like it, it almost looks like a candle, but it's got more of like a crayon texture to the wax. Oh, okay. And it gives gotcha. a, it gives off a lot of scent of blood. Mm. Almost like a long wax seal. Yes. Kind of thing. Yes, it's just a little thicker than a typical uh, wax seal. Okay. And it has a, um, it has a symbol carved into the wax. That's, it's kind of like a triangle but the ends on one side do not meet, and they kind of, like, curl out from each other. If you want to give me an intelligence plus a cult check, you might be able to identify this. Okay. I have some blood sorcery now, just if it with, uh, <laughs> with Sense the Unseen, you can definitely see that there is a powerful blood sorcery radiating from this. All right. Three dice. I do have some occult. Intelligence plus a cult. That is one success. One success? Yes, you sir. you know for a fact that this is some type of blood sorcery, but you really can't place what it is. Mm. She I looks see. she looks you in the eyes and she handles the bottle in a very sexual way. I'll leave that to the imagination. Mm. Indeed. And she says this could very well, if you play your cards right, be a bottled voice. A bottled voice? Mm hmm I can sense some blood sorcery at work with this. Very much so. And she smiles at you like... She smiles at you like a child who's showing off a new toy. Mm. You take much pride in this, yes. This steals a victim's voice and traps it in a sealed bottle. Oh. My. Hmm? I said, oh my. Mm. All you have to do is get him, or force him, to press his lips against the bottle. And then seal the bottle. And mark it with his initials. And he'll shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of chuckles at that. Uh, and he says, uh, this would be quite useful against the Malkavians. Oh, I think Absolutely. so. If only we had this during the Bush administration. <laughs> now, just for a little in uh, out-of-character knowledge, if the ritual is successful, the victim remains mute for as long as the vampire has the bottle sealed and in their possession. If the sealed bottle is ever damaged, the voice is restored immediately, and vampires and other supernatural creatures can have their voices bottled, but they must either willingly submit to the ritual, or the caster must restrain the victim throughout the rite, and then uh, score a critical win on the ritual test. Mm. Interesting. Yep. That's a, that's a fun little ritual. Yes, it is. It is a level three blood sorcery ritual called the Bottled Voice, and it is located in the Black Hand Player's Guide. Oh yeah! So you can use that as that's you see fit. 
Excellent. Have to keep that in mind. So I just have to shove this in his mouth and and seal it up and write his name on it. You can shove that in his mouth and seal it up and put his name or his initials on it, and it works. Excellent. Now, I will tell you where he is. Or at least where he might be. But I do have a price. For the information of his location or for the price of the uh, phallic voice stealing? Oh, I will definitely give you this bottle. For free? For free. Okay. However, and she reaches down and she pulls up an identical bottle and puts it down. Mm. This one is for somebody special. And I will tell you where your target is if you agree to do your best and get me someone's voice that I need in this one. I see. So I will be hunting two individuals then. If you don't think that's too much. Well, that, depend that depends entirely on who it is you want me to feel another voice from. Darian King. And you instantly know who Darian King is. Oh boy. Darian King mm -hmm. Darian King is the Archon who quit to become Prince of Portland. Oh. Well. You who, want me to see who, who is also Malkavian, by the way. Oh wow, a lot of Malkavians out here in Portland. Uh, I mean two is a lot. One's probably a lot. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I say I say uh you wish me to steal the voice of the prince? Yes. Hmm. His capacity as prince would not be quite successful if he were not able to speak. I don't think his capacity as prince is going to be successful anyway. Oh, really? Well... His greed has definitely, I feel, maybe has gotten the better of him. Now, this is actually a thing. I think I'm going to go ahead and have you throw another Composure plus Resolve check. Because as a Banu Hakim, this man has broken a law, effectively. And punishment is kind of what you guys do. Yeah. And, you know, what was it? Uh, resolving Composure? Yes. You can obviously say yes if you want to, but this is going to push you into that direction or not oh yeah no. i love rolling dice <laughs> uh, let's see oh, oh crits that is a crit so five, four five, five five successes you do not have to do this however there is a little voice in the back of your head going he kind of deserves it mm -hmm. well one of my conventions is never lose a trail and if i did not take this path i would be essentially starting cold uh so i will have to agree to these tips. And I say, very well. I will do this for you. Or at least I will try. She st she stands up and says, excellent, and puts them, uh, puts both of the bottles in like a little wine carrier bottle, uh, bottle bag. Hmm. You can find Tacoma in Portland. That, that much I guessed. <laughs> He's, Where in Portland? He is hanging around the local Anarch scene. Which so, bar? <laughs> the last drop. Of course. At least that's where the majority of the Anarchs are. Would it kill the Anarchs for once in their life to not hang out to the bar? <laughs> maybe, maybe not museum or park. I see. So this Malkavian primogen has made himself entrenched with these animals. Now, do I know, is he still the primogen, or is this kind of like us going after him without him really knowing that he's been found out? He is officially the former primogen of Seattle. So he's no longer the primogen? He is not. Has, he, has it been made known that he has defected from the Camarilla, or is he just kind of like, I'm not the primogen anymore, but I'm still part of the tower? Um, it is not public knowledge that he's not part of the tower specifically, um, but it is, uh, I mean, he's on the red list at this point. 
Okay. You could very well, uh... I mean, you don't really have to answer to anybody, but... It's yeah. up to you. It depends how difficult you want to make things. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, well, at the very least, I think I need to have a meeting with this Darien king. He would know more about uh, Sonata being the prince and him being the former primogen. So, the trail leads there. Ah. All right. So the last drop it is. I will pay, pay this Mr. Therian a visit as well. Please do. I appreciate your assistance in this matter. Well, I appreciate your willingness to help. Indeed. I will see you again after this is over. Looking forward to it. I, uh, I give a bow as I make my exit. She just, uh, she, she she doesn't bow, but she does, like, nod. Right on. And, uh, I give her bodyguards a, a look of acknowledgement as well. And, uh, I will make my exit from the atrium. And once again, hail another blue bear. Um, Hail another now, Uber. <laughs> Uber, yep. Um, now, would I would I be able to suss out where Darian would be? Um, I would I would say that with a quick phone call uh, to any of the other, um, like anybody within like the Camarilla that you know, they could probably point you in a direction on where you're going. Okay. Cool. cool. Uh, in fact, there is a rec there's actually a recently inducted Archon um, that just joined, probably within a, f a couple of months ago, uh, who is who was a member of the Portland Court. There's a, a Ventru oh. a Ventru by the name of Anton Dracon, who is uh, now a member of the Archons. And then I will absolutely give him a call. Okay. So on your way. In your Uber, I guess you're calling. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so phone rings a couple of times, and uh, w at first uh, the phone when the phone answers, uh, there's a lot of like loud music in the background, like you called him and he's at a club. Um, Everyone's at a club. <laughs> everybody's at a club. Um, he's like, is it change your neck in all these clubs? I don't know. About. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he, he answers, you hear the music, he's like, hello? Yes? Mr. Dracon. Yes, who is this? This is Zala. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. uh one, 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 you know who I am? Yeah, one, one second. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> uh, he'll, uh, you'll suddenly realize that the music has gotten quieter, uh, if not gone completely at all. And, uh, uh, Zala, yeah, how can I, how can I be of assistance? I apologize for calling you at this most opportune time. No, no, that's uh, fine. I was just, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking for somebody at the at the moment. Yes, I am uh, looking for Mr. Darian. I was hoping you could point me into a the direction. What king? Yes. You're in Portland. Mm-hmm. I sure am. Okay. Um. Let's see. Uh. Uh. He's pro. Uh, have you? Oh. Uh, okay. What do you know about? Portland. You, you probably wouldn't know much. <laughs> I, don't, I, I do not know much about Portland, unfortunately. I have not made myself uh, present in these parts. Okay, so um, a, a few months ago, uh, some Anarchs actually set our Elysium on fire. <laughs> uh, a lot is not that. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't you hate it when <laughs> you have to laugh out of character out of something you hear? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, hey guys, what's up? Oh yeah, some anarchy, you know, they kind of burn our shit down. Sorry, bud. Um, uh, damn it. Okay. Uh, I said, we, as, uh, <laughs> we, 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 st we still have a meeting place. It's just not like, it used to be at the Benson Hotel um, on the top floors, uh, but um, okay, so if you, if you, okay. <laughs> 
what you want to do is uh, get to pa uh, you want to get to Powell and Prescott, uh, and then you're going to want to turn on uh, County Road uh, uh, County Road uh, 27, um, and then just head down there, and you will not be able to miss it. I will not be able to miss it. No. Okay then. Um. You, you do realize that the uh, Anarchs burning down a Camarilla and Museum is, is a very big, uh, you know, problem, right? The, uh, the, the Anarchs that were responsible were, uh, handled. Ah. Publicly executed. That is most, that is most good to hear. That is a, that is, listen, you understand that is a little bit of concerning news to hear. Uh, I, I that is completely understand. It wasn't even, uh, it wasn't even a, uh, uh, the, major anarch uh grouping that's that's in the city it was it was just a uh individual idiot <laughs> well individual idiots can prove themselves to be quite the problem if left to fester that's yeah why we have a red lip. yes I, I i completely understand but i assure you well, i assure you the uh the culprit has been dealt with oh mr drake i'm gonna appreciate your uh, assistance in this budget. Um, would you happen to have Mr. King's contact information? I do not wish to uh, stop by unannounced. Um, if you, uh, I think the best way to get him would actually to contact his child, uh, William. Um, All right then. So uh, you'd probably actually want to check by um, Alan Prescott Hospital, which is actually on the way. Uh, and act for a uh, ask for a, a Dr. William Porter. Wonderful. I will do so. I appreciate your help, Raycon. Uh, um, yeah, anytime. Keep your phone handy. Uh, I will I do that. I may require your assistance. Understood. Excellent. Enjoy the rest of your night. Oh, thank you very much. And I uh, hang up. And uh, I recite the directions to the Uber driver uh, when they <laughs> stop along to the hospital. Okay, uh, you uh, you you head to Allen Prescott Hospital, um, and I mean it's 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 just it's a hospital. I don't know what really to tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, just like any other nondescript hospital. It is. It's everywhere. just every. It's just a nondescript hospital. Yeah. Very very bright and depressing. Um, uh, this this one has um, it's it's not the nicest hospital. It's kind of dirty, um, sticky floors. Uh, the the uh, the um, the lights kind of flicker in places. Dang. Some some venture needs to support this charity. <laughs> How does a hospital have sticky floors? <laughs> <laughs> do you do you really want to get into that? <laughs> I can only guess. Um, I uh, I wince as I step inside. It's this, like uh, a movie theater. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, man, um, you. Uh, so I, I step into this hospital. I tell the Uber driver to wait for me, um, promising him a fat tip at the end of this. Uh, oh, he's he's happy to he's happy to wait. Uh, I go into the reception and I ask for Doctor William Porter. Um. Okay. Uh, she's yeah. She the the receptionist is. She seems highly like busy with other things, but she will uh, without a problem. She will contact Doctor Porter for you. Um, he's uh, he's a guy who's who's a little bit shorter than you are. Um, he's got dark hair. Uh, he seems uh, seems tired. He seems exhausted. Uh, but he he'll uh, he'll meet with you. The uh, the receptionist points you out where you're waiting. Okay. But he's yeah he's. <laughs> He just he just comes right out. Um, you you asked for me by name. I did, Mister uh, William Porter, Doctor William Porter, if you will. Um, are, are we we're in private, right? Um, yeah, he'll uh, he'll talk to you in the triage area. Okay. So um, he'll walk in there and he tells uh, like one of the triage nurses uh, triage nurses to go get a cup of coffee or something. Yes, uh, Mr. Porter, uh, I am to understand that you are in relation to a Mr. King. Is that correct? <laughs> All right, yeah. What about it? He just drops his doctor. Like, he drops, his, he drops the doctor persona the moment you mention King. Oh, okay. Uh, good. Now we can speak in earnest. 
Uh, I am in need to contact Mr. Darien, and I was told that you could put me in contact with him. I know where he is, but I do not wish to come in unannounced. Okay, are you are you like the are you like a new Malkavian in the city? N- no, I am not the new Malkavian in the city. I am. Uh, Let's just say that I am here on official Camarilla business. Oh, god damn it. Alright, fine. Okay, um... Did they tell you where that you can find him, at least? Yes, I know where I can find him. I am just wanting to make sure he knows that I am coming. I do not wish to despoil him and uh, approach him on the house. Okay, um... Sure. Um, you understand? Yeah, no, I get it. I, I understand. Um, he seems like ridiculously put out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like I, I, uh, I apologize if I'm uh, troubling you with this. Are you are you wanting me to like take you and introduce you, or am I just? Do you just need me to make a phone call? Actually, if you would take me to introduce me, that would be most appreciated. It would get you out of this drab, sticky floored, poor excuse for a hospital. He, um, you you can kind of see a little bit more color flush to his face and you can tell that he literally just used breath he, he literally used blush of life so that he could sigh more audibly <laughs> he's just like this is, exactly, this is exactly what he probably didn't want to hear or did who knows uh, all right um uh yeah w- one second and he he reaches down um to the desk in the triage office, picks up the phone, and you hear he he's talking next to you. Obviously, you hear him, but you also hear his voice over the intercom. Uh, call uh, Doctor Malcolm. Can you please come to triage bay two? Doctor Malcolm to triage bay two. And this little guy with glasses and kind of like I've been here for at least two days. Hair uh, <laughs> walks in. <laughs> You poor thing. Yeah, he's he's like he's got a he's got like a Red Bull can sticking out of his pocket. Um, <laughs> at, that, at that point, you might as well just die drip drip. Jeez. Yeah, and he's and he's holding he's holding like four different folders, and Porter literally just looks the guy in the eye and says, "You're closing tonight. I have something I have to do, and you offered to take my position." And he's like. Hey, I'm going to take your position, all right? You look like you need some rest. Why don't you get going? <laughs> and mm. Porter's like, you know what? Thanks. I could actually use a rest. And he's like, all right, let's go. <laughs> all, all right. right. <sighs> you didn't have to exert yourself over the man like that. He's used to it. Anyway, <laughs> <and> he's just... <laughs> all right. He walks out. He's like, okay, are we taking your car? Uh, I've been taking Uber's quite often um i have one waiting outside if you want to take the uber um or we can, i don't or think we can it's a good vehicle. idea to bring an uber to the mansion that's what i thought uh we will take your vehicle then yeah uh let me handle this real quick sure i'll walk over to the uber and then <laughs> toss him a big old wad of cash and say thank you for the ride young man don't spend it all in one place uh he he thanks you and and says remember to remember to give me a good rating Yes, I shall. Like, maybe. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I remember. Okay. Uh, uh, I uh, <laughs> I return and um, I don't know if he he got his car and pulled it around or if he just waited for me. But either way, I come back and follow his lead. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. He is driving. <laughs> a 2024 Lexus UX, uh, which is a uh, red SUV. Um, yeah, anyway. So <laughs> he just gets in the car, waits for you to get in. And uh, okay, so I should probably fill you in on the way that our Elysium system has been working lately. Um, um, last I knew, your Elysium blew up. <laughs> and this is the new one? It didn't blow up. There's some minor fire damage. That's about it. But uh, the uh, the council didn't really feel comfortable uh, continuing using it uh, in its current state until it gets fixed up a little bit more. And also the idea that the Anarchs were actually freaking brazen enough to 
to do that is uh, not something they're really comfortable with either. Um, they did not anticipate the Anarchs being brazen enough to attack the Elysium if they knew what it was? Not like that. Not like that. The Anarchs, the Anarchs in the city aren't typically as brazen as they uh, have been as of late. Um, and he's as he's talking, he's driving, and he's driving further and further out of the city. Um, so, uh, official Camarilla business. How uh, how familiar how familiar are you with the uh, cult of Mithras? Hmm. Well, and uh, how familiar am I with the cult? I mean, I you, you'd probably know they exist. Out of game, I know about the cult. Uh, in game. Okay, well, uh, tell you what, let's go ahead and just do... Um, let's see, is there anything we can do? Because you don't have insight. Um, I figured it'd be another intelligence and a cult or something like that. Yeah, we can do a cult. We'll, we'll do intelligence with a cult. Okay. All right, that is two successes. Two successes. Okay. Well, you'll know that uh, Mithras was Prince of London um, up until, like, there's rumors that he was Diablerized, but there's a uh, basically a, a kindred cult that, that worship him as if he is the actual, uh, the actual god Mithras, like, trapped in kindred form. Um, okay. And you know that he, that, like, they have uh, chapters that pop up all over the world. Okay. Now, the rumor of him being Diablerized, out of game, I know that it was um, Monty Coven, mm -hmm. who was a Bano, ha Bano Hakim. Would that information kind of have been circulated around uh, um, circles as Bano Hakim? Or I'm going to say it circle it more likely circles around the uh, the idea of you being an Archon. Okay. Um, simply because people are looking for Monty Coven, and there's lots of rumors on whether or not Mithras may have taken over his taken over his body. his body yeah so Ooh, reverse diablery you gotta love it well it's kind of dumb to diablerize a methuselah but <laughs> oh yeah it, it's very fair yeah unless you have some you know so forcing your soul i guess yeah i say i say um i am familiar with this cult of mitras yes all right so, their, their circles are more concentrated in london well there was a chapter house here for the cult of mithras and uh they didn't last very long. We'll just put it that way. And uh, the um, the Camarilla has taken over their chapter house as as uh, our own personal Elysium. Mm, very good. It's a lot more uh, out of the way of uh, human interference. Nothing wrong with that. More secure, less bright eyes, easier to monitor. So just as so, just as long as it's not too far. Uh, it's not that far. Uh, he he is going to drive quite some ways, and it is going to take you quite a bit of distance out of the city. We're probably pushing at we're probably pushing like three o'clock in the morning at this point, Ooh. with all the travel. Because keep in mind, you you landed in Seattle at midnight, right? So, um, three few hours left. <laughs> so you guys will, uh you get to the point where like there is nothing out here like you barely see like it's nothing but forest and cattle fields and that's pretty much it but um of, over eventually you start seeing a little bit of a light off in the distance and you start coming to this massive mansion that's behind a brick wall uh armed guards let you in past the gate when they uh when they see that it's that it's porter and right. uh, you uh, drive up to the front door. Um, ghouls come and open the door for you. And I give them a respectful head nod. <laughs> uh, ghouls come and open the door for you, and then um, they just they take Porter's car. Like there's valet parking at this Elysium. Nice. Um, you are. <laughs> Very swanky. Uh, you are led up uh, the to the stone uh, up the stone steps up onto the porch. There are columns, uh, large pillars, um, and uh, taken to a set of double doors that um, that open into a very large, 
luxurious, highly decorative Elysium. Um, there's just a lot of kindred here. I, I really don't know how much detail to go into this uh, because there just seems to be kindred chatting um, in every corner. Uh, they, When they notice somebody new walking into the city, of course, you become the, the center of attention. Everybody's looking at you. Um, but uh, Porter, Porter will uh, take you into a side office and tell you to wait there. All right. And on my head. The room is a little uncomfortable. I'm going to put that out there. The reason I say that is because it's a circular room. It has bookshelves oh, around. Man, no corners for me to brood in. There are no corners. That actually, for some reason, is massively <laughs> unnerving to people. Um, <laughs> there are uh, there are bookshelves that that cover most of the area, um, most of the wall space. The uh, the ceiling is domed, and the light fixture in the center of the ceiling which is lighting up this room there, there's just no shadow there's no place mm. that shadow has a, a chance to get to unless you decide to hide under a desk or something like that um, my goodness this room is perfect to interrogate La Sombra <laughs> and uh, the light fixture itself is a bright light with a golden sun motif that surrounds it bright light with a golden sun motif huh? yep Mm. Um, the seating arrangements are all antique furniture. There's a couch, a few chairs. There's a very large desk. Um, it's it's just overly fancy for no reason, as you can tell. Um, and when the door opens, Porter is going to walk back in, and he's followed in by a man who's dressed well for about two centuries ago. <laughs> his hair his hairstyle is top rate for about two centuries ago. Uh, and if you would like, if if you would like an avatar for him, I typically use Calvin Candy from Django Unchained. Calvin Candy, yes. from Django Unchained. Yes, Le uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character yeah. from Django. Uh, My goodness. Yeah, t same look. He's got the cigarette and the little in the little holder and everything. Um, crappy little I goatee. Like, I like it. Um, and he's also followed in by a man who looks like he was not born with a sense of humor. Um, he has a very severe haircut. He's wearing a black suit. His most notable features is he has two tattoos. Um, he's got tattoos of crucifixes on the tops of his hands. Ah. Religious. Mm. But um, Porter walks in and says... Please, may I introduce to you my sire, the prince of the city, Darien King. Sire, Darian King. sire, may I introduce to you... I'm sorry, what was your name again? <laughs> I, I am Zala, Arkan, under the employ of Lucini. And Porter just kind of like turns on his heel to face his sire and says, I did not know his business. Have a nice night. And just beelines out the door. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> And he'll stop. Yes. You will stay for this too. I will stay for this too. Awesome. That sounds phenomenal. And he just he, he just takes a seat on one of the uh, one of the chairs. <clears throat> Mr. King. Yes, Mr. Zala. How can I help you? Uh, I have some business that I need to discuss with you. Very important business. Very uh, sensitive that uh, I will need you to make sure it does not get out between you, me, and your child. All right. Now, now, okay. first off, are you aware that you have a very prominent Sabbat figure that exists within Portland? Within Portland? Yes. Are you talking about that Noah Masters? Because he's been dealt with. No. I'm not talking about any Noah Masters. I'm talking about somebody else. A very striking female. Um, I, I am unaware. You are unaware of this. Well, who are we talking about? Now, I do, I do want to point out something yeah. out of character. I do want to point out that that meeting was in Seattle. Oh, sorry. My bad. It's okay. I guess I would have, uh, <laughs> I would have point out. I, 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 I realized I realized where you were going, and I figured I would uh, bring that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, so Seattle. Yeah, not Portland, but Seattle. Okay. Uh, and I say, 
She she exists fairly close to Portland, and she has her eye on you, Mr. Darian. Uh, I am quite aware of Elena. Yes. Why why does she why does she covet you? Why does she covet me? Indeed. I was unaware that she coveted me. <laughs> why do you why think that she? she why do you think she wants me? He seems well, ridiculously amused about all of this. I pull out one of the bottles and I put it on the table. Do you know what this is? Um, Chateau Leron, <laughs> and he just starts giggling like an idiot. <laughs> No. This bottle has the ability to capture voices. Does it now? Indeed. I am telling you this in the spirit of us both being a part of this ivory tower. You, as a former Archon, stepped down to claim the city of Portland for your own. <laughs> yes? Yes. I am here on official Alistor business. Do you understand what that means? I assume you do. I assume that Lucinda had a job for you then. Indeed. I am here in regards to Mr. Sonata. What, Takuma? Yes. What about him? I need to find him. I know where he f might be frequenting, but I wanted to touch base with you to get as much information as I can. I know that he was the former Primogen, and I wanted to confirm with you the exact relationship that he has with the Camarilla in the city. Well, I don't think he really has much of a relationship with anybody in the city specifically. At least not that I'm aware of. Does he still consider himself a part of the tower? I mean... I would assume. I understand that Seattle's going through some major problems, but aren't we all? Indeed. What caused him to fall from grace? Well, you're the one working the job. What do you think? I assume he had done some sort of transgression. <laughs> yeah, I'm not local to these folks. I have heard rumors. But from my understanding, they were just rumors. Oh. Indeed. Does my presence here make you think that they are just rumors? Well, you being here means that whatever protection he had is definitely gone now. Indeed. Do you think that you would be able to bring Mr. Sonata to us here? Well, if he's in the city, then I'm pretty sure he should listen. Indeed. And so, I would ask of you to do this for me. So where do you think Sonata is? Because if he is here, <clears throat> he has not come to uh, pay his respects as he should. From what I've been told, he's been frequenting Anarch bars. <laughs> really? Indeed. That is quite amusing. Indeed it is. This is why I asked if what you thought about his relationship with the Camarilla. If he is consorting with these Anarch scum, one would think that perhaps he had maybe defected. But if you say that he has and still is a part of the Camarilla. Well, like well, I said, he has not come and uh, shown his respect, if he is here. Indeed. Would you be able to call him then? Where do you think he is? You said he's hanging around with the Anarchs? So I'm assuming yeah. he's gonna be in, he's gonna be in the uh, Old Town. Yes. Which bar do you think he might be in? Well, if he's in Old Town, he's most likely at the last drop. That's where the Anarchs like to congregate. Mm-hmm. You have your answer? Old Town? He, he turns and he looks at the, uh, the man with the tattoos on his hands. He goes, Old Town is just giving me one 
big problem after another lately. Mm. <sighs> Those anarchs, I tell you. It seems that the Camarilla has a habit of underestimating them. <laughs> I can assure you we are not underestimating the Anarchs in this city. We just shipped a... Oh? We just shipped a whole group of moth. Did you? We did. After, before or after they had compromised an Elysium? Oh, this was well after. The one who decided to set fire to the old Elysium, which I really don't care, because that building is just hideous. But, uh... The one, uh, the one who did that, Duke. Duke was his name, I think. We had, uh, we had our boy Monroff just, uh, well, he just, he set an example out of Duke in front of the entire Elysium. And, uh, then let his friends go so they could warn the others. I see. How did one individual Anarch a was able to do such a thing? Uh, he walked into a he walked into an active hotel, got up to the right floor, and just set a fire. That's about it. Just set it aflame? Hmm? Just set it aflame? Just set it aflame. Just like that? Just like that. All it takes is a lighter. Indeed. The most simplest of things. But, like I said, well, he was publicly executed. This is good. Well, I suppose that if Sonata has indeed embedded himself with the Anarch locals, it would give me even more reason to find him. So, how would you... How exactly would you like me to cooperate with this? Well, I would hope that you would be able to contact him and see if you could bring him here for a friendly meeting. If he has not made himself known to you in his city and he still considers himself Camarilla, then he should not object. Well, that right. is very true. Tell you what. He turns to the he turns to the man with the tattoos again. He's like, I want you to get our boy Mason. And I want you to have Mason go on over to the last drop and let Sonata know, if he is in fact over there, that he is wanted for a little get-together with me. Do you want to do this right here? Yes. Then just have, have him come to the mansion. And uh, he stands up, the, the man with the tattoos, he stands up, nods, and heads out the door. Mm. Now, what do we do if he decides to not come quietly? Well, if he decides to refuse, then he has shown his colors he has shown that he is absolutely not allied in with the Camarilla, as you hoped, which would only make me finding him that much more sweeter. Very true. Now, are you hoping to, uh, do you want to wait for him here, or did you want to go with him? I will... I will accompany him. All right. After, uh, after a few seconds, probably right as he says all right, the door opens again, and a uh, young man, probably, I'd probably say early 30s, walks in. Uh, he's thin, uh, brown hair. Uh, he wears a, um, let's see, let me see what. Good old brown hair. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Where are you? Anyway, yeah, he's thin. He's got brown hair. He's wearing a brown leather jacket, um, jeans. He's got a, uh, a button-up shirt that's kind of a, a faded blue. It's not quite... It, it's not denim, but it's like it kind of has the color of it. Mm. Um, and... Uh, he walks in. <clears throat> he walks in with uh, the man with the tattoos on his hands. Uh, comes in behind him. He's like, uh, "You, uh, you wanted to see me, sire?" And he's he's looking at you because he doesn't know who you are. Um, yes, uh, Mason. Since you have such a, uh, a f 
let's say a a kind relationship back and forth with the with the anarchs we need you to take a little trip to the drop and uh our friend uh Z- you said zala correct yes indeed it, this this is probably annoying because you know this guy you have spent time with him and he acts as if he does not know you um <laughs> this is like like they they have times where the archons just meet and compare notes and train together and things like that you've probably worked with this guy he's been an archon like how how yeah. long how long has your character been alive let's see you you gave me a pretty extensive let's see date of birth 1898 so when do you think when did you become a, uh, an archon what year if you uh, in, embraced in 1930 yeah 1930 I would say I don't know I probably was a kindred for probably a good 20 some years before I got to that point maybe okay. a little more okay uh, he was made an archon uh, in the late 1800s he has been around for a while um, he's not really he's not really what I would call an elder he's an ancillai but um mm. but like he was he was an archon when you showed up right uh, so he's been around the block yeah he's been around the block um Zala here uh he just uh he's gonna accompany you to the drop because he's never seen it before isn't that right Zala mm-hmm. he's like Absolutely. okay um let's uh Let's head on out then. Uh, car's waiting out front. All right. Uh, just a moment before we go. I'll meet you in. Uh, Mr. Darian. Yeah, sure. The, uh, the other bit of business that I have uh, this bottle here, as I have put out before and I told you what it was, this was a gift from Miss Elena. You see, part of the price that she asked for to assist me in gaining some information was that she, and I say this, in reverence and respect to your former position, what you are now, and your age. She wants your voice, which is exactly why I stated she coveted you. <laughs> really? Yes. Very much so. I speak with as much honesty as I can. And, uh... So... <laughs> you let me get this straight. This... <laughs> so this Sabat has given you this this bottle to steal my voice. Mm-hmm. She has indeed. And, uh... <laughs> what exactly, uh... <laughs> how, how does this work? What are we supposed to be doing with this? Uh, you put your lips to it. <clears throat> and once you do, you remove it from your mouth, and I put your name or your initials on the bottle, and your voice is stolen. Hmm. Sealed. Bottle sealed, obviously. You will not be able to speak. All right, and what is your intention with this whole thing? Well, as I spoke, as I have said before, I am revealing this information to you as out of respect. This bottle is here, and I put it on the table for you because I'm giving you the choice to be able to pay this price for me. Now, seeing as you're a prince and I'm Archon, I could just ask you to do this for me. But like I said, I wanted to give you the choice to do so. If you choose not to do this for me, you realize that this will leave me, as you say, hanging dry with this seraphim of the sabbat. Now, what kind of prince would I be if I couldn't speak? Indeed. Many princes have heralds that speak for them. Which is part of the reason why I asked your child to be here with you. I thought it appropriate that if you should choose to do this, he could become your hero, and his voice would be your voice. Now, Porter is sitting behind King. Like, he can't... Like, he's not in King's eye, like line of sight whatsoever. And he's what just... He he's just sitting there staring at the bottle, nodding his head slightly like, please, just freaking make him drink. <laughs> 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 now, what are your thoughts, Mr. Darian? <laughs> well, obviously, I cannot acquiesce your request. I would assume so. So I guess that leaves that as at an interesting position, considering the fact that I guess you rank quite a bit above me, sir. So how exactly are we to handle this? All right. So the next path of choices has come upon us, Mr. Darian. Now you have two choices here. Either I can make you 
do this or you take this price upon for yourself and you will be the one responsible for handling this Elena. Responsible for handling Elena. I think there's plenty of guys out there who would like to handle Elena. Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. Oh, yes. I know this. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what exactly does that mean, handle Elena, in this context? What do you, what do you think it means, Darian? She is Sabah. But it is a bit out of my jurisdiction. Would you not believe that? It would be, unless an Archon told you that it is now within your jurisdiction to deal with this. Doesn't Seattle have a prince? It, yes, I suppose that is true. The problem is, she doesn't want that prince. She wants you, Mr. Prince. Or should I say Mr. King? You know how confusing it is <laughs> to be a prince with the last name King? <laughs> yes, I could see how that could cause uh... quite a few bit of conundrums in the brain. See, this still just exasperating. This uh, this leads me into some very strange situations here. Mhm. Mm and so that is why I'm giving you the choice: either you have to do this, or you don't do it, and then you have to handle the problem. It well, I'm I'm not really sure how this is going to be enforced. <laughs> How what is going to be enforced? Like, you may want me to handle a thing, but what's actually going to make me handle the thing? I would hope that you had enough respect and decorum to honor the words of your superiors. Seeing as how you are no longer an archon. Mm. Yeah, but right now what you're doing is forcing me into a situation where I have to repay a debt that you've made to a sect enemy. Indeed. In the interest of a greater Camarilla purpose. Or, this could just be handled very easily, and you lose your voice for a while. Well, how long is a while? Uh, how long did you say, out of game? Or would I not know that, because I didn't know what kind of ritual it was. Um, I did not, I don't think she told you. In character. Yeah, she, um, she did not tell me. I did tell you how long out of character. Basically, right. his voice is gone until that bottle gets broken. Right on. Uh, could... I would not know exactly how long it is, but I can say that uh, this is a bit of blood sorcery. Do you not have any court wizards here? Oh, no, we definitely do have our fair share of blood sorcerers. Indeed. So you have the means to be able to figure out exactly what this is, how long it might last, and what you could potentially do to break it. Now tell me, would it not just be simpler to go with other voice for a while, let your blood sorcerers do their magic, per se, and then business as usual? Okay. <laughs> Real quick. Are you, are you attempting to intimidate him into doing this? <laughs> Uh, a little bit, yeah. I'm kind of throwing my way. I'm throwing my weight around a little bit, uh, trying to kind of make him see, like, hey, this is the path of least resistance, my guy. You know how the archons work. You know how the chain of command works. Yeah. Just, just say yes and move uh, on. Okay. So you're gonna have to throw a test for this. Okay. Absolutely. It is gonna be your manipulation, plus your intimid, right. plus your intimidation, plus your status as an archon. So that is gonna be. <laughs> That's going to be a total of five dice? No, it's not, because you have marked down on your sheet that you you took just a, the status one point. But the fact yeah. the fact is, you're going to have a lot more than that. Um, you're going to have oh, okay. the, you're going to have your uh, your two points of manipulation, your two points of intimidation, and five points of status. Okay. Do you want me to mark five points on the sheet just for the sake of it? I mean, you can if you want to. You can if you want to. <laughs> Maybe we end up continuing the adventures of Zaha at some who, point. Who knows? I mean, you you said that you also wanted this to tie into your thicker than water, so if you wanted to. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna love coming back to game and having fucking uh, Darian mute. Uh <laughs> that is great. Um, all right, so that's gonna be five, six, seven, eight, and, nine dice, and it is going to be against his composure and resolve. So let me go ahead and give you what you're rolling Which against. 
right on. Which might or might not be a lot, depending. This guy's pretty old, so. Yeah, he's also an idiot. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell by his uh, child just kind of sitting there. Please just make him do it, man. Oh my off. god, I crit. Uh. Oh, shoot. Oh no, he's got one, two, <laughs> three, four, five. E. I think I could. No, yeah, it's four, seven. Five, no, it's seven. seven. You gotta get All more right, than see. difficulty of let's seven. See. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. We got one, two, three, four. You can yeah, four. you can spend a willpower to re-roll three regular dice. I will do that. The re-roll three regular dice. That means all three of these. Yeah. Oh man, I don't think there's a way for me to get it unless I get a crit with these. Uh, unless I get another ten. If I get another ten with these reroll, would that count as a crit? Yes. Oh come on, baby. Damn. You got two, two more successes. More. So what was your total? My total was one, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five. Six. Go. You got six. Okay. Um. Am I able to succeed? At a cost. I don't know if you. Ooh, uh, do yes, that. I do. I do. I do succeed at a cost. I love succeeding at a cost. Um, I will allow you to succeed at a cost. But let's see. What is the cost on this one? You know what? Your cost is due to the fact that this person has made this so difficult for you and mm. turned against the Archons and obviously does not have the respect of his own child. So you can imagine what the rest of the city thinks of him. Yeah. You are definitely taking this as serving justice, and for the next scene, you are going to have to have your compulsion active, your clan compulsion. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. So let's just get the strict details out of the way when it comes to that. Yes. Banu Hakim are in the player's guide. And compulsion. Oh. Judgment. The vampire is compelled to punish anyone seen to transgress against their personal code, taking their blood as just vengeance for the crime. For one scene, the vampire must slake at least one hunger from anyone, friend or foe, who acts against a conviction of theirs. Remember, convictions aren't necessarily connected to any immortal culture or sect. Uh, they can purely be personal for the vampire. Failing to do so results in a three dice penalty to all rolls until the conviction is satisfied or the scene ends. If the one fed from is also a vampire, don't forget to test for Bane. Uh, induced hunger frenzy as above. So that is your, that is your penance for succeeding on this. All right. What do you think? I think that's fair. So I have to, anytime someone goes against my convictions. See, I've I, always been curious about that because it says against their convictions. Does that mean yours or theirs? Uh, I think it's probably speaking in the sense of uh, it's it's talking like about the, char the player character. So from okay. an outside view. Yeah. So I think, it, I think it, it makes a lot of sense that if there was a vampire that... Um, goes against my personal convictions yeah and now i have now i have to you know fuck them up essentially okay well since that uh, well you have to slike at least one hunger on them yeah yeah i got so uh, I gotta, like bite them and beat them like oh man yeah uh that you know what i'm gonna have to write to them and find out exactly what that means but i think for this for this i'm going to go ahead and say that it is your personal convictions that people cannot be turning against which is fun because they don't know what your convictions are um <laughs> So, Darian is going to... He almost squares up to you. It's its almost a ridiculous... Because this is a very short man, as it is. Yeah. And he's trying. He's actually... You think he might actually be standing up on his tiptoes. Um, try, trying to look bigger. <laughs> and he look he's looking at you, like, in a sense, like, of pure defiance. And he takes the bottle, and he puts it to his lips. <laughs> I, uh, I give him a nice warm smile at that. And then when he's done, uh, I will seal it. Mm -hmm. and mark his initials on it. He, um, 
He doesn't say, well, obviously, he doesn't say another word. Uh, <laughs> he stands there as you finish the ritual. And he gives you a nice, long, hard look. And without any other notice for anything, he just turns around and walks out of the room. Hmm. Hmm. Poor man. <laughs> Oh, um, now I have a ritual that is craft bloodstone. Yes. Uh, I know it takes a minute to make those. Is it possible for me to have some on hand? I will go ahead and say that you already have one on hand. If you want to, you can roll your intelligence plus your occult and the number of successes. I, I know you only have three dice, but uh, you can roll your, uh, the number of successes will be how many I, I will allow you to have on you. No, that's perfectly fair. I did forgot to mention that earlier. Oh, I know you have it. I was waiting for it to come up at some point. Right. Let me check to see if there's a max amount. I'm not 100% sure on that. There used to be. Good. All right, I got one. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it doesn't matter then. <laughs> okay, yeah, you have you have one on you. I mean, you. I mean, come to think about it, you technically have one target, so that makes sense. Um, yeah. Good. So oh, well, I guess I guess that probably isn't going to happen. So my thought process was I was going to slip a bloodstone into the uh, bag. I was going to let them know that way they could have one of their blood sorcerers kind of try to figure out or try to lock onto that bloodstone. That way, if they ever wanted to go and deal with the bottle themselves, they have at least a lead where it might be kept. Well, the blood the uh, the bloodstone is only going to be known to you. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's it's like well, a psychic I mean, connection. Right. I mean, I figured maybe a blood sorcerer could kind of like tap in and kind of usurp that connection. But I mean, I only got one, so I got to save that for me. Yeah. Uh, so it's moot point. Moot point. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I look at his child or I look at a uh, porter and I say, you got your wish. He just has his eyes are just wide in shock. Um, and the man with the tattoos on his hand is going to look down at Porter who quickly like regains his compo his composure and then uh, hurries out the door like scared of you, you can tell there's just like utter fear um, in Porter yeah Porter Porter is just filled with fear when uh, when that man looks at him <laughs> and uh, he'll look at you and bow his head slightly I respect the position of Archon. But I hope that this doesn't last long. His mouth being closed? He is still the prince of this city. He is. But his mind is still intact. Simply because he cannot speak does not mean that his presence cannot be known. If a prince cannot make their presence known in any faculty in every way, other than the words that come out of their mouth, they're not worth much as a prince. Oh, no. I believe he'll be able to handle this without much of a problem. He does have a strong support system. Then he will be perfectly fine. And as I've stated, in the interest of honesty, you know where the bottles will essentially be. You know who is in control of them. And you guys, your loss may be with it as you see fit. And the fact that it is a blood sorcery ritual, as I've stated, will also give you a lead that you could potentially use with your own blood sorcerers. I've given you every tool necessary to <clears throat> mitigate this unfortunate thing. I hope you will uh, consider that. He just kind of stares at you for a moment. He almost seems like he's calculating what his retort should be. Are you aware of the support that our prince has? Am I aware of what kind of support he has? He's definitely alluding to something that's bigger than just normal Camarilla support, right? Not really. Unfortunately, there are parts of the Camarilla that are falling out of control of the Justicars, especially in the United it States. Uh, yes, that's right, because Lucinda is, has been pulling back her support of the U.S. quite a bit, too, so... 
I, I look at him and I say, whoever he has as his support, just know that I have the Red Alistair in mind. He smirks at you, just like the most dismissive smile as he says that. And he takes a couple of steps closer. I'm well aware of the Alistair and what she's capable of. I just hope that she's aware that Fiorenza Savannah holds the support of Darian King. And uh, Fiorenza, I, I don't know how much you know of her out of character. If oh, you're if you're watching if you're watching Seattle and stuff, I'm assuming you've yeah. Um, oh, I, I watched all of it. I watched it too, so I, I know. <laughs> she is quite the pistol, that. Thing. Yeah, and just some some in character information that you would have uh, about Fiorenza is that she is a concern when it comes to the Inner Council. They do not know if they could control her if she decided that they were going that she was going to like take over the Camarilla in some fashion. The way yeah. that the way that she's doing things is just very frightening to the old guard. Absolutely, she is uh, relatively young and has already made herself a prince, and on top of that, made herself a prince of a city that used to be held the strongest city held by the Sabah. Yeah, exactly, that should put fear that should put fear in any old guard. She doesn't have. She she obviously as a prince she doesn't have like archons under her control. But no. but it's she just, has. It's just the fact that someone... What were you saying? I said yeah. It's just the fact that she was uh, she was able to be a prince uh, at such a young like, a younger age as a kindred, and then on top of that, doing it in a city that was controlled by the Sabbat. Oh, absolutely. Is, uh, like the resources to be able to pull that off is definitely very. Uh, very vast. Yes. I'm well, surprised they haven't tried to make her an archon, honestly. Well, the thing is, they have several times, and she keeps refusing. She, oh, yeah. That. She, uh, she keeps refusing archonship. She, she has a whole bunch of like mortal institutions all over the world in her control, and where she doesn't have archons, she does have enforcers that rival the archons. Yes. Like she's starting up the Camarilla 2.0. Exactly. And this guy uh, who's in front of you seems to be implying that he might have been sent by her. That he portered it. Not portal. Porter. Not Porter. The uh, the guy that yeah. Porter's intimidated by. Yes. The guy with the tattoos oh, okay. on his hands. Oh, the tattoos. Yeah. Uh, the guy that I'm going in a car with. No, no, no. Sorry. There's so many NPCs. I apologize. No, you're going in a car with Mason. Uh, this oh, guy, right. yeah, this guy, you haven't really had his name revealed to you as of yet. Got you. Um, but he is in the room, yes? And I can tell that Porter is implying to him. Porter chickened out and ran. He he left oh, the room. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. My bad, I thought I was still speaking to Porter. <laughs> Sorry, no, you were talking to the guy with the tattoos on his hands. All right. I say, uh, very well. I believe the, uh, the situation here has been handled give my best regards to Miss Fiorenza she will definitely hear about you indeed if I ever have the grace to speak with such a powerful person injured it will be most pleasing you have yourself a good night hmm. and uh, I will exit going to the car giving him a uh, respectful head nod. Okay. He um, he stays in the room as you leave. Um, I do take the bottle with me. <laughs> you do take the other bottle, or the, the, the bottle with you? Okay. Uh, yeah, yep. And, um, yeah, when you get outside, uh, Mason is waiting for you, and he is driving probably one of the ugliest cars you've ever seen. He's got a 1970, uh, 1970 Dodge Challenger, which is shit brown. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty wow, sure. Nice. I'm pretty sure that there are still fast food wrappers in there from when he was human. 
Well, we are going to this old town. This car screams Anarch, so I suppose it fits. As I, like, very daintily grab an old fast food wrapper that was on the ground and tossing it out the window <laughs> in disgust. Yeah, um, one of the one of the ghouls who's working the um, <clears throat> the valet will, like, quickly pick that up. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as you get in, um, he'll, he'll quickly turn it off, but, like, really loud 80s music starts playing. Um... But uh, he will he will drive uh, fairly quickly uh, because dawn is upon you. Yes. Uh, so so what's the what's the plan here? What's really going on? Um, is it the guy talking to me or is this out of game? No, it's him. And by the way, I know we have I know we have nine minutes left on schedule. Do not worry about it. I want to finish the story. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go. And we arrive. Time's up. Uh, <laughs> no. I am. Well, that's fine. I mean, I'm I'm also up to a part two if you want to. That's I mean, but I know you're you're busy with your time. Um, so whatever you well, want to do. Well, let's let's see where this goes. Okay. Um, I say, well, if uh, this Mister Sonata is frequenting this last drop bar, my hope is that he will accompany you to the car. I will remain in the car unseen. All right. So I'm just walking in and grabbing him. Yes, you kind of fit the description of the Anarchs a little bit, yes. Uh, have you frequented this area before? Uh, I'm, uh, look, I, look I'm, I'm a fool on camp. Alright. That's fine. I am definitely a member of the Ivory Tower. It's, it's... You don't have to be so nervous, I understand. I'm not nervous. I'm, not I'm just letting you know. Like, I'm Cam. Mm -hmm. I just have a good rapport with the Anarchs. And that's good. I feel that having a good rapport with some of your enemies is necessary. Most of these kindred that are at that bar aren't really what I would call enemies. They're just fed up with people telling them what to do, especially people like King. Mm, I can understand that. King is a blowhard. Yeah. Yeah, he really is. That's fine. I am not here to cause any trouble between this city and the Anarchs within the city. I am only here for one person. So I'm perfectly fine for you walking in, exchanging pleasantries with your Anarch friends, as long as you can bring some out into the car. Sure. And, uh, unless you start any more conversation, he is quiet the whole drive. Uh, I don't, <clears throat> uh... <laughs> um... Is he quiet because he just doesn't have anything to say? Does he seem like he wants to say something, or is he just kind of biting his tongue because he doesn't want to misspeak, or uh, you? It, or would that be like an hint? It seems like he's biting his tongue. Okay, uh, I do. I do let him know. I was like, "You are free to speak as you wish." I may be an archon, but I am not uh, as close-minded as some others. But I won't press him if he doesn't want to say anything. Yeah. I don't know. Like you said, you're just here for the one guy. Oh, yeah. So, uh... Do not work. Can I, do you, can I ask what he did? Yeah. What do you... What have you heard of this Mr. Sonata yourself? You must have some idea of his crimes. Of his crimes? Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, I wouldn't be searching for him if he had not committed some sort of crime. Well, yeah, I, fi I figured that, but um, no, I really don't know who this guy is. Oh, okay. Well, he was the former Malkavian primogen of your city. You did not know who he is? Okay. Uh, out of character, uh, he was the former primogen of Seattle. Oh, Seattle, my bad. My it's bad. okay. The... Sorry, I know the city hopping gets it confusing. <laughs> Yeah, my bad. Um, so I say, uh, he was the former primogen, uh, Malkavian primogen of Seattle. Okay. And now... And now he has made, your way, made his way into Portland. He has not presented himself to the prince of the city as acknowledgement. He is hiding out with the Anarchs. Yeah, but look, I've been a hound for a really long time. That's not something they send an Archon after. That's something they send me mm. after. That's true, indeed. So why haven't you gone after him? I didn't know anything about this until just now. I see. Darien was the same. He did not seem to know that Sonata was within his city. Well, if the Prince doesn't know, how would I know? 
True enough. Forgive the double speak. It is sometimes necessary to suss out who knows what. <laughs> uh, are you familiar with Diablerie? Is that what he did? One of the things that he could have done, yes. All right. He drives. Uh, he drives anywhere from fifteen to twenty-five miles an hour over the speed limit. Just letting you know. Ooh. He he speeds. Oh, I, thought, I, thought, I thought he I thought he sped up as soon as I said that. No 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 no. Just like from the time he leaves the the mansion all the way to the uh, all the way to the last drop, he he goes it, like outside of the city he's going about 20 25 miles over the moment he ends up in the city part he's more like 10 miles an hour maybe 15 if it's an open area um <clears throat> but uh i don't know have you have you ever been to portland oregon i've never been to portland unfortunately okay it is a very strange place uh as you guys are driving around there's probably going to be street performers of one kind or another on various uh on various street corners um, there's a very good chance that you m- might very well see a uh, man in a Darth Vader outfit, but wearing a kilt, playing a flaming bagpipe on a unicycle. Uh, <laughs> I need his autograph. Uh, you need, need his autograph. Like that's yeah. that's that's like legit shit you see in Portland. <laughs> yeah, I, I've um, heard a lot of cra- crazy shit about Portland for sure. Yeah, the Portland motto is literally "Keep Portland weird." Hell yeah. Um, there's probably some type of protest going somewhere. Uh, going on somewhere about something. Um, it is hipster central. Um, also, um, when we start getting into Old Town, it really is Old Town. Like the buildings look like they're at least a hundred, two hundred years old. Um, at that point, the uh, the there's a Chinatown district that people uh, that that you end up passing at one point in time. That like all the streetlights are this like like bright orange color. Um, there is a point where he does slow down his car because the uh, there the homeless population is so rampant that um, there uh, that there's just tent cities everywhere, like just in yeah, the I've, like in the road. I've heard about that too. Yeah, yeah it's it's pretty bad, um, but it also has like a very strange, I guess, world of darkness charm. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> A strange place in the world of darkness. Portland fits right in. Yeah. Um, so he will pull right outside of the last drop, which is just a cinder block of a building. Um, it's just a it's just a square building with a flat roof. Uh, there is a big rusted. You, you really can't tell if it's red because it's supposed to be red, or if it's red because it's rusted. Uh, door um, with an old wooden sign that says the last drop and there's a noose with an upside down shot glass in it. Wow. Um, and it's like, it's right. It's like right in the center of like historic, historic Portland downtown. Mm. Is this an actual bar? Uh, no, I completely made it up. Uh, (laughs) this is, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I made this place up. Uh, it's kind of based off of the bar that's in uh, Bloodlines. Yeah, the last round. Yeah, the last round. Yeah, this is the last drop. Uh, the bar is actually the old, it's built on the old Gallows Hill of Portland, which is why it's the last drop. Um, but yeah, he uh, he gets out of the car, he sticks his head back in the window, and goes, "You just sitting here?" Yep. Bring him out and have him sit in the front. Have I will be in the back. All right, and he uh, he goes inside. All right. Do you um, do anything while you're waiting? I prepare my steak. Um, I get into the back seat. I make a. I want to make a like a cursory look around the vicinity to kind of pinpoint any areas that if the guy gets spooked and he runs, um. I'd be able to tell exactly where, like, what areas he could be coming out of, and where where would be a place he would, uh, like, the direction he would most likely run to. Okay. Uh, kind of done, like, kind of pinpointing his escape routes if he does so, um, and trying to see if there may be any other weirdness going on in the area. Knowing that this is an anarch bar, that does not mean that they aren't, you know, doesn't mean that they're stupid. So. Okay. Well, um, let's put it this way. Uh, since you're taking time to familiarize yourself with the area 
while you're in Old Town, uh, if anything goes wrong, I will go ahead and let you be one trait up in streetwise checks, trying to find this guy. Oh, okay, cool. Um, just because ba- basically that's a, it's an it's an old rule from the older systems where like if you're taking time to aim, you get a point up on shooting, that kind of thing. Uh, since you're taking uh, yeah. yeah, since you're taking time to learn the area while he's in there, I'll go ahead and say you're a trait up if anything happens. Um, the uh, the bar itself, uh, there's a lot of activity happening in there. Uh, when he opens the door and goes inside, there's just ACDC blaring out the door. It's very loud. Um, not, only, not only do you see a lot of people walking in and out of the front door that he walks into, you see people who very well are probably more clientele for the bar leaving out the side alley um, away from where the door is. So there's there's probably either a back entrance or something happening back there. Um, he's probably going to be in there for about 10 minutes or so. And I'm going to... I have to roll two tests real quick. So don't don't worry about you. This is just to see if he can handle this. Right on. Um, just so you know, after I'm done, like kind of cursory, like looking at the area, I'm gonna position myself in the back of the car using a uh, cloak of shadows. Yeah. Ready to rock. Can he handle this? We're gonna find out. Actually, it's fucking Mason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. He got two, three, four successes. That's Mason's roll. And I'm just gonna go ahead and roll them all for this guy at once. Like I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not splitting up the roll for hunger and stuff. Heck yeah. All right. So we got one, two, three, four successes for Mason, and one, two, three successes for the other guy. Okay, so after about 10 minutes, uh, Mason walks out and he holds the door open and a, looks like a a middle-aged Japanese man follows him out. And they're laughing and they're talking. Um, uh, He, like, um, Sonata actually, like, reaches over and and pats Mason on the back. Um, And they, uh, they... They get in the car, and Sonata gets in the car with him, and he just starts driving. So you guys All are right. driving probably like two or three miles over the speed limit right now. All right. As soon as we get uh, a little bit, like a way, a little ways away from the area where it's kind of like not crowded, uh-huh. uh, I will plunge the stake from the back seat through. Oh my car! <laughs> All right, <laughs> my ugly ass car. All right. Um, hey, no, no, it's got a little bit more character to it, you know. <laughs> See, that's gonna be so, okay. So, so uh, yeah, go ahead and roll your staking. There's your difficulty. The difficulty is two. two. <laughs> okay. He doesn't know it's coming. I was just rolling his uh, his stamina and his fortitude. All right, so this is going to be a roll of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with a. I don't have the negative to it, correct? You do not have the negative at all. So it's a full, so it's a full roll, and I have staking as a melee specialty. Yep. So you so get that extra. Be- you get that extra dice, and you can always burn a willpower. Oh, also, I'm, I'm, also... I'm going to blood surge. I was going to say you can also blood surge, yes. I will blood surge. I want to. I need to make sure this is going to go off, so... I will blood surge. The Riles check for the blood surge there. And I am not hungry. That's good. So then I get to my... This is the least amount of blood that's been... <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm not... It's like, uh... It's pretty... Pretty interesting. Um... What did I say? Was it eight dice? Uh, let's see. Normal? Strength. And I believe... Seven. Yes, eight. it was eight dice plus two. So plus ten two. dice total. Yep. Ten dice total, need... so that's nine with one hunger. Yep. That is a one, two, 
three, four successes. Four, four successes. Um, I need five, correct? You need five successes, but you have to keep in mind also that you're going past his, and he rolled two. All right. So, so you need I seven need, successes total. So I need a willpower for that. So let's see. Make sure that's what I got one. Yeah, you're you're gonna want to get successes on all three of these. Man, all these rolls. Staking sucks. I'm just gonna point that out there. Right. Oh yeah, staking is very hard. Uh, I got all three successes. Holy shit! <laughs> 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 okay, uh, you feel the stake go through the pleather of the seat, and it feels like it gets stuck for just a second. But as you push it through, it goes right through, and there's a quick gasp, which you know should have been. A scream from <laughs> Sonata, and the next thing you hear is just Mason yelling, "My fucking car!" <laughs> what the hell? Mm. All right. It was quick and efficient. It was very quick and efficient. This could have gone a lot worse. Um, what exactly? What what exactly are you going to tell Mason? Because right now he's heading towards the Elysium. What do you want to do with that? Uh, I tell him to pull over when we're like heading towards the Elysium and we're more in like wilderness area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell him to stop so I can finish the job. And um, I will take him like a little bit out of the ways and I will... Uh, use my kopesh to decapitate him. Um, if that's something that you are willing to just let happen, or if you want something more to come up from it. There is literally nothing he can do. He is at your mercy. You're just cutting his head off? Yes. I was just going to cut his head off. Okay. Um, <laughs> his, his head hits the ground and rolls slightly, and his body, his face... Uh, quickly catch up to their natural age like into composition and now, what is does he dust does he he does not ride? he does not dust completely but he is a highly desiccated corpse oh, okay mummified pretty much yeah he he's yeah there's he he looks like he was definitely older than you were okay but he isn't quite oh. old enough to just ash I will uh, take a piece from him that I can to prove that he is gone. Uh, let's just go ahead and say that the uh, the uh, the the uh, the archons have a way um, of taking some of the dust of their targets and having them identified. Okay. Um, so I will I will collect some of his more ashed parts of his body. Um, flesh or what have you. Yeah. Put it in a nice little ventilation vial and keep it in my pack with me. Okay. Uh, I will emerge from the little bit of highway woods with my co-fish, putting yeah. that away as I'm approaching the car. Yeah, Mason Mason I'm... obviously stayed at the car while you were doing this. He's sitting at his he's sitting at his uh, steering wheel with both hands, ten and two, just kind of like gripping the wheel over and over again. You can see that while you were out there, he duct taped the hole you put in his car. <laughs> I sit in the front uh, again, mm -hmm. and he, I say... He doesn't look at you at all. Thank you for your assistance, Mason. Mm -hmm. We can... Uh, I can assume that I have a place to lay my head at your Elysium, correct? Yeah. And he hits the gas and starts going really fast, probably like probably approaching 30 35 miles over the speed limit right now uh as the sun is starting to it's the sun is not rising quite yet but the sky is getting hazy the mists are turn, starting to rise I, I turn the volume up on his 80s music as he's speeding for high l savoring the victory yeah the 80s song i'm turning japanese is what's playing <laughs> and uh it is. he will get you to the elysium in a timely manner where you are offered a room, which there are highly, like, highly comfortable rooms. Like, you go in, there's a California king with, like, heavy blackout curtains and, 
a chair and a writing desk and like a book a bookcase full of books like old classics um it's it's ridiculous in this place um this uh this this place was not originally set to be a um an Elysium. This place was literally set to be a cult of Mithras <laughs> chapter house originally. Um, so yeah, you get you get set you get set up with a with a nice room and are allowed to uh, rest throughout the day. Um, okay. What do you uh, let, let's go ahead and just do a rouse check real quick. No problem. Am I hungry when I wake up again? I haven't been hungry this whole night. No, not at all. You, you, I love E5 for this purpose. <laughs> Dude, the hunger system is just so much fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, it, it'll, it'll like, favor you or it can kick your ass. Yeah. Blood is no longer just like a pool of, su- like a mana pool for superpowers. It's yeah. Like just, You're not just, playing X Men. Oh, no, I'm pretty hungry now. All right. I'm literally, I'm hungry now. Now, you wake up, your compulsion has subsided. You feel more like yourself. The, the influence of your Andaluvian is no longer. Uh, in, in the back of your mind but you do feel hungrier um, and there is that little that little that little whisper I know that you have it marked down that your sire is unknown but that that little whisper in the back of your mind that that tells you like you're hungry now you should have eaten him mm-hmm. no one would have no one would have blamed you like you were sent to kill him anyway indeed and I know the uh, history of my blood called for such an action, but I must resist. Mm. Condemning him to death for diablery and then doing the same to him would just be just a complete violation. There's even that argument in the back of your head that's like, yes, but your clan was built for that. There's forgiveness. Not so, me. how do you, uh, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you handle your evening now? Um, so after I awaken... Uh, I would try to meet with Darian again uh, to thank him in his assistance in providing me with Mason and cooperating with the bottle um, and I wanted to give him a gift he will agree to meet with you alright um I pull out the other bottle that I did not use. Okay. And I tell him, I understand that I put you in a bit of a position that will complicate things. And as recompense for that and for a a, uh, payment in helping me, I will give you this empty bottle here. It acts the exact same way as the one that you had put your voice into. I'll leave this with you to do as you wish. And that it may be useful in endeavors. He he looks like massively annoyed. I'm not gonna shy away from that. He looks incredibly <laughs> annoyed. Um, but you can tell that there is a slight uh, spark of interest in his yeah, eyes when you uh, when you give him the bottle. And I say, uh, and uh, I will be make, taking my leave now. If you could give my best to Miss Fioretz, I would appreciate it. He just kind of looks over towards the man with the tattoos on his hands when you say that. I look at him as well as I uh, take my leave. All right. So how do you handle the turning in of and all that? Um, Well, first I will stop by... Um, because the airport I went to was in Seattle, right? Yes, yes, it was. Um, I will stop by the atrium to give Elena the bottle. She is so happy to have it that she will grant you a request. A request? Yeah, she she will grant you whatever request that you ask for. Uh, I ask for her to teach me the ritual to create that bottle. She'll agree. She'll agree. And the, behind, and the thought behind that is I learn the ins and outs of that ritual and then I can learn how to break that ritual to potentially oh. 
have that in my back pocket. Okay. Yeah. No. She'll she'll explain to you how to break it. You literally just have to break the bottle, um, or or okay. open it. You know, like or or just like break the wax seal. Um, she will teach you how to do it. And okay. if you if you end up bringing this character in again later on, um, mm-hmm. I will allow you to buy it. But I'm letting you know that it's a level three ritual. Okay. Just the just the uh, ability to have to be able to purchase it at some point without having to go through extensive, you know, narrative loops. Yeah, no, no, no extensive narrative loops to learn uh, voice uh, bottled voice, uh, which is like I said, it is a sp- sabbat specific blood sorcery ritual. Sounds good. All right then. That is the only request I make of her. I give her the same uh, cordial dismissal that I did last time. I appreciate her helping me, and that I hope she enjoys her bottled voice. Oh, she she is giddy as hell when you give it to her. <laughs> and I'm going to use that later in my story. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, and then uh, I will get a hold of Lucind. Okay. Uh, and let her know that uh, it's done, and ask her how she would like to meet. Um, the way that the Archons typically do it is there is a castle in Austria that uh, nice. that they meet in. Um, it's actually Hardestet's castle. Okay. Um, which has, since his death, has been like turned into a uh, a specific base for uh, for the Archons themselves. Um, so basically, the way that it would work is you would go to Austria uh, and turn over the sample that you brought where it will be tested and you are rewarded in some fashion all right typically uh, the rewards for archons are uh tutelage and disciplines you typically shouldn't have and things like that excellent um i will then let loose in the note through our normal discreet uh you know communicate um that i will be heading to the castle all right. She is happy to hear it. Um, she has all of these ridiculous questions that she she asks. She asks um, you. She would she would have you call on a secure line. Basically, if you call her, uh, nobody answers, and then she'll call you back a couple minutes later. Right. Right. I figured we we'd have some sort of convoluted way of communicating to ensure security and privacy and yeah. things like that. Um, but uh, anyway, she let's just run through the phone call real quick. Um, no problem. She uh, she calls you back um, and the first words out of her mouth, which are pretty typical for her, are, it's done. It is done. How did you do it? I gained the assistance of the local tower. It was quite simple, really. Load him out of an anarch bar, got him into the car, take him through the heart, disposed of him in the middle of the wilderness. Mm. He no, was... No, I... He was fraternizing with the anarchs. Yes. Making this even more sweet of the victory. Not only did he commit serial diablo, he had also consorted with those in scum. Did he say anything? No, he didn't have a chance. Mm, pity. Well then, pending the... Quick. Hmm? Quick and efficient. Yes. Pending the... Uh... <laughs> no, don't uh, worry about it. I know how wow. I know how it feels. <laughs> when you're DMing or STing or whatever, it can get yeah. hard to get the words after, after a while. You've got so many characters in your head and how they speak and what they would say and how they'd say it. It's just like uh, uh, pending verification. You will uh, receive payment, and she just hangs up, which is her her normal. She is not a very personal person. After all, oh, yeah. they, uh, after all, she is the first. She's the first Alistair. They invented a position of killing specifically for her. So. Right, right. 
She's very cold, which oh. I am not unused to. <laughs> All right, and I will call post there. What did you think of your personal adventure? I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I thought it was great. Like the trails, um, the information gathering. I was looking forward to that because I thought it was really cool. The wheeling and dealing, uh, I actually was not expecting having to wheel and deal between uh, prominent other figures in the city mm. to get my job done, which I thought was really cool. Well, I didn't want to give you just three hours of rolling dice for combat, you know? Oh, no, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I like I like the mix of things. I thought it was really cool. Some social, some mental. Uh, the, the only time it ever really got physical was right there at the end. Yeah, which you, you handled that, like, ridiculously well. Like, the guy didn't even know you were there. Oh yeah, that's that was the that was how I wanted to try to work it because I'm like, man, staking is so difficult. I'm gonna I need to kill him, so this is probably the best way. Yeah. And uh, even with the high dice pool I had, I still was like, oh god, it, it all came down to a willpower reroll. Yeah. Having to get all six pieces on each one, which was an extremely tight window. Uh, yeah, that could have gone very was, different. That could have gone very different. Yeah. So the tension was there. It was really good, and uh, no, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I liked good. it a lot. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Very glad to hear that. Um, I enjoyed that. Um, so I will be happy to, uh, if uh, if you email me, uh, which uh, my email is is all over the place. I can give it to you again if you want it. Um, let me see here. Not here. I'll put it in the general chat. Okay, that's my you email. Send, you can send you can send to me through the Facebook chat too if you want. To. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. You'll have more. You'll have longer access to that because unfortunately, with this uh, with this uh, server, I have to revoke like access to it for for other people's privacy and stuff. Um, yeah, because this is the server you used for all your games, right? Yes, yes. This is the um, this is just like for when I do like client games. Right on. Um, that makes sense. So, I want everybody clogging up the, the server. And yeah, I'm, I'm working on getting like a whole thing together where people can just get on. Like I have community Discord and stuff like that, but I'm working on a role playing server where everybody can just get on. Um, but uh, yeah, if you uh, if you email me, so I have your email. I'm not sure if I do or not. I might. Um, then I can send you the, a recording of this if you'd like. Because um, I, I record it. Um, and um, if completely up to you, uh, if you don't mind, since it's connected to Portland, I'd love to put it on my channel. But again, it's it's your thing, so it's up to you. No, you can do that. That's awesome. Very I cool. I like that a lot. Very, very cool. It'll be a little while because I am very behind. <laughs> oh, that's fair, yeah. I, we, play, uh, we play our game once a week. And uh, the one that I just uploaded uh, was recorded in May. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm a little behind <laughs> because of all the travel and shit that I've been doing. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad to hear that you had a good time. Um, this was fun. If you ever do decide to bring this character in to do another thing, uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, do you want to upgrade your sheet right now, just in case? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 do, I do plan on uh, playing again. Uh, might, might bring some of my pal in on it, too. Uh, okay. You say you do group games too, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I I set it up the way that I set it up so that like people like I understand that it can be a little bit of a steep price. Um, but if you have like I I can do up to six people comfortably. So okay. like if you have six people and everybody and everybody's chipping in, it's like less than going to the movies, and it's three hours. And oh, yeah. no, also I, uh... also as you can see, I'm kind of lenient on the three hour thing. Yeah, yeah, and that's my, you know, that's my thing. I mean, the value, like, I felt like this was a very good value. I would pay uh, full price for this kind of experience, you know, again. I know this time was kind of like a special. Yeah, uh, I'm, I am currently you know. doing a sale, uh, but I think I'm going to re, I'm, I think I'm going to redo my prices uh, to make them a little bit easier uh, for people um, in, in, the, in the new year. Nice. No, well, you can definitely expect me, at the very least, you can expect me to be, to uh, take you up on that again. And uh, I know for a fact I have at least one other person that would join me. Very cool. Um, so. Very, very cool. Um, so the way that I would do this for people who are uh, possibly coming back and stuff like that, but like may not also, uh, is I typically allow you to take one attribute wherever you want, one skill wherever you want, and then one discipline wherever you want. Like it's not like your typical, okay, have three points and have fun, because you wouldn't be able to use that. 
Oh yeah. Okay. I see that. So you're just letting me get uh, up an attribute, up a skill, and up a discipline. Yep. Or and, one or the other. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, up, up an attribute, up a skill, and up a dis discipline. That way, that way you can like have fun with it. Like you can come in with more blood sorcery. Um, also, go ahead and put a mark uh, like under your notes that you have access to that one sabbat ritual uh, for a level three. Alright, so I think I used intelligence quite a bit this session, so I feel like that makes sense to up. You did. You did. You used a lot of intelligence rolls. Um I personally I would take an insight. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Insight help uh, it helps a lot. That was already a thought. <laughs> insight 100%. Out of um, out of curiosity, what discipline do you think you're going to take? Uh, I was either going to take another point in blood sorcery, or I was going to take another point in aspects. Okay. And in and, and uh, get heightened senses, so I would have both heightened senses and sense of the insane. I can see that being useful. Because that would be instead of taking the level two of aspects, I would just take the other level one, and that would be my second level. You yeah. Know what I mean. Yeah. Well, very very cool. This was fun. I like uh, I like Zala. He's a he's a fun character. And having an archon running around uh, in my city was a was a fun thing to see. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I love running in Portland, Oregon, just because I know my I know my NPCs. You know, I don't have oh, to yeah, I yeah. don't have to stop and like <laughs> check for other like little things. Absolutely, I, I get that a lot. It's a lot easier to let things flow and to get a sense of what's going on when you when you're familiar with the people you're using and whatnot. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I get that. I liked it, though. Uh, I've never really played in Portland or Seattle or anything like that. Um, so it was it was cool to kind of get in over there. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed doing a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a city hop. You went to, like, three different cities. Technically four, if you yeah. count the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. San Antonio, and then, uh, then Seattle and Portland, then yep. Aust Austria? Yeah, Austria. <laughs> Austria. Ca Casa de Hardestat. <laughs> Casa de Hardestat. All, All right. right. Well, I need to get some rest. Uh, I'm glad that you had a lot of fun, though. Um, feel free to brag about it. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I like, I like being talked up, <laughs> especially online where other people can see it. <laughs> Absolutely. I will, I will definitely give you your kudos on various social media platforms. Very cool. I appreciate that. <laughs> No problem. All right. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, running. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And you have a good night. And I will talk to you later. All right, man. You have a good one. All right.